was the last couple seasons. EG probably will be embracing that role of underdog. Let's get started. Map one, Clubhouse in the grand finals of our second Invitational. It's seeing a lot of Clubhouse at this Invitational, likely because it's slightly out of the meta, yet it's the sort of map that you're going to set up a lot of strats going into this event. You want to catch people off guard. Seems like every team has the same idea. On the attacking lineup, Necrox is going to be bringing that Glaz, which is an operator who has seen a lot of play, but no follow-up in any other smokes besides Canadian on the Jackal, so no Candelas from Ying. Focusing on that Roam Clear, which is quite interesting given that this is a clubhouse basement defense. They'll start here. One of the benefits of with how much clubhouse we've seen for the other teams, the ability to deep, dig deep into VODs. You will know that most of these strategies that have been run over the last four or five days will emerge yet again. We know that EG, while this is one of their stronger maps at the moment, has looked beatable. It'll be up to Penta to be able to capitalize on that. A couple things to note about Penta. Their versatility, not just on maps, extends to operators as well. With Pengu's at something like 15 operators so far this tournament, which shows a great deal of depth, not just from him as an individual player, but also for the rest of the team. They'll have him off-site playing Ella. Now, I mean, when I say off-site, it's Clubhouse <laughs> Basement. There isn't much off-site to speak of, but he won't be playing the typical anchor that he would along with Shate. Early on, Canadians, Jackal, not going to be seeing any footprints given that Penta is just primarily focused downstairs. They don't have any roam unless you count, again, that tunnel, which honestly really doesn't count in this uh, matchup. It's going to be a specific point of contention for both teams because Tunnel has been favored by everyone playing on Clubhouse in this Invitational as a point to establish a crossfire over the anchors in Arsenal. They'll do some drone out before they get inside of the building. Usually you'd say that Clubhouse is a map that you don't need to drone as heavily outside of basement because the assumption is, is that everybody will be down on the lower level. That was an assumption that Rogue made yesterday and was burned by it, as it was EG who started things off on Clubhouse with two roamers well above sight, able to take round number one away from Rogue because of it. So now both teams will be doing everything they can to ensure they know the location of the defenders. You can see NBK still droning down for the rest of his team. That Jackal's going to bring some destructibility. No buck is a little bit unusual for this site. They do have the shotgun from Canadian's Jackal, but it's not nearly as effective in this circumstance. There's so much floor and wall that needs to be opened up on the top floor to get those vertical sight lines downstairs. BC just going to be looking for all the potential electronics. The defense is set up to stall the attack and calling it out for his team. Canadian swiftly in towards the ch church wall, which is a very powerful position if the attack can open up. A church hold usually involves a thermite not on the board at the moment. You'll bring that Hibana to be able to take care of all of those hatches. Canadian uh -oh. though will go to a drone a little bit unwisely on a wall that is set with a bandit shock wire. Takes some damage. He manages to spy the Jaeger of Goga sitting just by the bar. Necrox inside a tunnel, sees the lesion, misses it. Fabian gets the first kill. Necrox, just some poor aim, unable to take out the Legion who pushed up aggressively on blue. I wouldn't be too surprised to see Penta start going for the frags, and they will. Shate eliminates Young. Now Penta holds an advantage of two. Smoke goes out onto the doorway, just inside of Moto. An angle being held right now as NBK being outdueled. That's a similar angle that we saw from Canadian that is now being used against them. Another smoke will go down. They will not be able to push through that main doorway. Shate a second kill, this time on the Canadian, and the push completely fallen out at this point. They have very little control, and BC still above dropping down. We'll try to take out Fabian, still inside of blue. He's entrenched at the moment, sees his head. Would be a bad start to get Flawless against them. Goga takes out BC, and Flawless it will be. Penta already a strong start on defense. EG gets nothing round number one. Of course, with a basement clubhouse defense, you'd expect such a result from a team like Penta, likely to be reflected shortly by evil geniuses. As they go into the basement, it's going to be a much heavier smoke strategy from Penta, bringing a Montaigne and a Glass, which is kind of interesting. You don't often see Montaigne used at all in the Pro League or at these levels of play. So where he sees use is going to be a point of focus. I'm not entirely certain how much attention was brought to it. 
when we saw Penta play on Oregon in the very first day of the quarterfinals. Bobby and Rana Monte. That was a strategy that they came up with as they were waiting to walk out to their machines before the first match. It's a strat that was invented quite literally on the spot. That's a key component of why Penta is so good, is how quickly they will adapt to different teams and be able to come up with strats that work on the fly. This is something that Wilkie highlighted on the analyst desk. Basically a dream team of European players all assembled together with incredible potential. On the other side, you have Evil Geniuses, also a dream team, just from a different region. North America, an amazing squad that was assembled by Canadian in the earlier stages of Rainbow Six. Both of these two teams, technically not the oldest in our Pro League, but the players themselves have been around since the start. This mirror strategy being pulled out by EG is one we've seen them run in previous seasons, particularly the last. Instead of bringing a Blitz down Dirt Tunnel, it's going to be a Montaigne, as was highlighted by you yesterday, Kix. Necrox is very strong, playing at the elbow of Dirt Tunnel. Right now, Fabian will see him. The drone just getting hung up inside of the razor wire. One thing that Rogue was able to take advantage of was exhausting all three of those toxic babes. Necrox had to fall back to sight at that point, in which case, EG got pushed and were completely run over. You've already seen one go out now. Montaigne is a slightly different operator than you can see of it. But Necrox, wow! Pengu drops his shield, and Necrox playing inside a Dirt Tunnel. Leads things off for EG. Their dirt tunnel push, you've got to think at this point, falling apart, they will move. You can see pressure from above. Likely now we'll see something go towards potentially blue or even side of Kitchen Hatch. So Fabian sees Necrox, the smoke uncontested, and Fabian off the board. It was two first kills for Penta, and now EG reciprocates. Necrox absolutely on fire, almost no utility wasted. Still two gas canisters there for the smoke. So he's going to be able to stall out this last half of the round. Penta, meanwhile, are out of one hard destructor and their primary push through that tunnel. So in a bad spot, they're going to look to open up the drop downs at the very least. Still have a glass watching from above. Holes in the floor opened up by the buck will allow the glass to be able to get a couple shots in. Also some longer sight lines inside of the actual arsenal room that the glass can stay at. But you can see two members of Penta moving down towards the bottom of the stairs. That'll be a... Very good opportunity for the Glass to see all the way into the eastern side of the site. It's saw that BC was playing there behind one of the armories. Young takes out Shate. It's going to leave just the Glass as well as the Hibana, who sees the Mira. A great shot by Jonas. Takes Young's head off. And now he has control just of the Attack. one wall. Two Miras next to Church. Attackers of Loki. Goga pushing into the site. Going to get taken down by BC, who goes for the double and gets it. Eunice eliminated, and Evil Geniuses take their first round of the series. What a great play by BC, just to track them. There was no answer there. A big miscue from Pengu to be the one to try to take out that barbed wire, and an equally good read from Necrox to push up and capitalize. You don't take out that Montaigne that early, and your job of defending that tunnel becomes so much more difficult. If that goes completely different, the smoke loses all of his grenades. That means that area of denial is gone for EG. They have to collapse and give up a huge Bomb, portion of the site, in which case you would imagine what we saw from Jonas was when he got to the bottom of the stairs, there would be too many operators cramped in one area. Even one rotate would be uh, easy pickings for the glass. You know, the interesting thing is you don't have to have your Montaigne melee the barbed wire in the tunnel. You can force out the defenders in tunnel and then have a later attacker clear that barbed wire out. And if that had happened, Necrox wouldn't have been able to secure that, secure that double kill, and I think, by extension, the round. Now, bar defense here from Penta. Now, this is the bomb site you don't expect to win on the hold, but uh, Penta going to be going for it, uh, obviously, nonetheless. Reinforcement, interestingly, going down in the stock drop down. That means Pengu is not going to be able to rotate out of the B-bomb site. Possibly Penta expecting Evil Geniuses to anticipate that drop possibly putting an attacker downstairs to catch them. Most of what we've seen from EG attacking this site has been situate your glass and your capital right at that doorway. Can't really get a lot of value out of those fire arrows as well as those smoke arrows from capital if there's a deployable shield in the way, as you mentioned yesterday. They are direct impact. So you can shoot them at walls, you can shoot them at the ceiling. It differs from typical and traditional smoke grenades. NVK, what a shot! Jonas off the board! The bandit tries to peek. And it only takes one as now BC goes on to Goga. 
And in 40 seconds, Penta already down by two. He'll take control of Strip. And you can see a push from the main door means that the rest of Penta will have to consolidate. EG going for a strip take this time. So the traditional stock push that we've seen of them, not right now what they are favoring. That's a good change, and that'll catch teams off guard, as it seems to have already. It's really just choose whichever you're more comfortable with. NVK gets a second. Shate eliminated now, and Penta not looking very strong on this far hold. Pengu gonna be throwing out the gas canisters towards pool table, pushing aggressively, trying to even things out. Not gonna get BC, it will in fact be the other way around, and now Fabian, the last defender, has to deal with an attacker coming from above. Here's the drop from the buck, cannot hit the shot, the shotgun from Canadian. Doesn't even need to use the rifle. Evil geniuses win their second round in a row. And a flawless round two. Was it me or did it seem like there was a bit of nerves on Penta there? There were two very easy situations that they completely misread. I'm not entirely certain what their thought process was. They'll pull back Amante. Now, when we were in year two, season three, land finals in Sao Paulo, it was this exact site and this exact map that Entz, who would later go on to win that seasonal championship, managed to successfully execute a Montane push onto stock, which is not something that we see all that often at this time. It could be something that we could uh, have Penta now trying to execute against them if they think they're still weak on dealing with that. It's a very old strategy, Montane execution on the stock. It's been there since the very beginning of Siege, even before he had the side flaps, people were trying to execute that exact strategy, even before smokes were as efficient and uh, big as they, were, as they are now. People have been trying to go for the Montane plant inside of B. So it's to no surprise that Ents would go for that and successfully pull it off, but it's a huge risk, and I'm not sure that it's going to work for Penta Sports, as the Montane that we saw last time from them didn't work at all. BC has been almost exclusively running Echo on this site every single time. That would work very well against Montane. Of course, one blast from the Yokai drone, the Echo's drone will drop the shield of a fully extended Montane. Instead, BC is going to go with a Valkyrie which suggests to me that there's going to be a lot of heavy rotations and not so much of a static defense that we've seen from Evil Geniuses before. Eunice going to be opening up that front door using his glass, going for the similar angle as what we saw from NBK last round. You see Disruption moving itself up over by Stock. They have managed to all completely close in on it. You hear the Montane, the Twitch, the Zofia all aligned, and Goga not too far off, just by Kitchen. So clearly a Montane push on to B. Buck, just by construction doorway, Necrox is going to get aggressive on him, hit by the lifeline, will down Goga and secure the kill, only losing about a third of his HP. Still has two gas canisters, Necrox playing phenomenally so far in this match. Young, who was so hot in the quarterfinals, cooled off yesterday, but Jonas just by the main door. He'll behead BC, the Valkyrie down amidst the smoke, takes some damage, but Jonas gets away with just a tiny bit of health. Good mobility from him in order to get out in time. But behind the Monte, there is a plant going down. Necrox tries to come out, but a good read. Canadian and double will stop the plant in its tracks. Shate eliminating Necrox as he tried to push out, and your diffuser is once again down. But NVK looking the wrong way, not expecting Shate to be there. Two to two, Canadian takes out Shate. It's the glass of Jonas, who's only on one shot. Goes prone, a 4K from Canadian! Canadian breathing it in already early on in this best of five, feeling very comfortable to win it all. There is a belief at LAN events that the longer that the team known as CTM and now known as Evil Geniuses play, the better they get. They have looked so far like they are completely outfoxing Penta, a team that has only dropped one map so far from the group stages and quarterfinals onward. That was, of course, to EG, and it was done so on Bank. We do have Bank to be played in this best of five, but it was not EG's pick. So a basement defense now from Penta. This is the only site they've been successful on, the only attack that they have been able to dissuade. We'll see if they're able to do it again. Evil Geniuses bringing Necrox on the glass. They don't want to bring a shield, which 
makes sense. It hasn't been working for Penta so far. I'm kind of interested yeah, that it's a Montane rather than a Blitz. Either way, though, Penta struggling with that strategy. Five seconds remaining. Young opting for the Blackbeard. We'd seen him on Blitz a couple times yesterday. Not uh, the most success out of that, so I think they'll try to uh, go with the DMR, which seems to be at the moment one of the best weapons in the entire game. We have the Blackbeard situated inside a dirt tunnel. He can hold a long angle into blue and essentially cut off complete control of the back of Arsenal. It's a strong position to be in. Clearing out that ambient noise. Canadian moving into strip. He's going to go towards Bar, and it's just going to be, you can see the drones right there on your screen. They're just trying to establish that there are no roamers from Panta Sports, and that's a good protocol to execute. There aren't any. Pangu is in construction tunnel, but hardly a roam. We also see Fabian trying to aggress on these main stairs. Very dangerous position to play, especially against evil geniuses who will always open up the top of those main stairs, the floor there, to establish the sight line and deny that push from Fabian. You see Canadian flexing onto the Hibana. The Jackal wasn't all successful last time. So it was the round that Penta won. It was also flawless. They didn't lose a single soul on that team. Their push came together. You see Canadian just trying to open up sight lines, as previously stated, onto the bottom of these main lobby stairs so they can execute properly. Fabian holding onto it, though. He wants that kill, just trying to disrupt the push as much as possible. EG has been pretty proficient in terms of time. There is a pre-placed C4 there in the main hallway. Like the going to be able to detonate that, possibly get a kill. Construction tunnel has been opened up by EG, and Necrox obviously going to be the player to try and push that in. It's, that is kind of his hometown. With, with the lack of shotgun on attack as well, that was the one thing that the Jackal brought was that secondary sidearm. It's going to be a bit limited in terms of what they can and can't accomplish inside of the kitchen. I wonder if that pressure will be a significant issue for them. Shate loses all but a tiny portion of his health. They had Young pushing inside of Blue, as well as the Glass inside a Dirt Tunnel. It does look like they'll reset Shate as well as Pengu. So that's two members of Penta who've been picked back up. I'll give them just a small advantage over where they were in terms of health that's left. NBK from this angle before got challenged, was unable to win his fight, but you can see that Penta is a bit more reserved. They're not going to peak those angles because in order to expose themselves to NBK to get the kill onto him, they'll be showing to Young, the Blackbeard, who shoots. Jonas takes down Canadian. That is the Hibana. Now Pengu eliminating Necrox. A smart idea to reset him. BC down. Young gets the first kill for EG, but Penta right now in commanding position as they'll need to get the Thermite back up. Attackers Neither member of Evil Genius in position to strike. BC finished off from below. The Blackbeard, no chance. Fabian eliminates him. NVK sees Fabian, lights him up, can't secure. They'll fight for the trade. They get it. And Penta holds on to win the round. Was three in a row for EG. But Penta able to answer back. And this site right now looking like their best option. A much more even contest than the round score actually will tell you between these two teams. That attack from EG was much closer than the previous one. You can see that Penta, they're going to have to reevaluate re a couple of their strategies moving forward. Potential Rook coming from Young. That's an operator you don't see very often on the Church Arsenal Room defense. It was Canadian who I believe was playing the ACOG on site in the basement previously. So yeah. once again, some more changes coming for them. They can go back downstairs and Church Arsenal is where they'll go. They have it back unlocked after a successful defense on bar. We saw a nice setup from Penta on the last round where they had that pre-placed C4 in the main hallway and a Legion Trap above it to try and detonate upon the Legion Trap being triggered. Uh, well done, uh, a good strategy overall from Penta, but they did not manage to get it executed before Evil Genius had already shot the C4 in the main hallway, thanks to NVK pushing downstairs. You could see that was obviously why Fabian was trying to play on those main stairs so aggressively, but just couldn't get it done. Last time around, Penta had split their resources onto this site. They had two pushing in through Dirt Tunnel, and a really good play by Necrox was able to take out both of them and completely Five throw uh, the rest of Penta into total terminal turmoil, if I can Attackers will that the bomb you so got it. I imagine that we'll see a Dirt Tunnel push as well, likely with the Glass of Jonas. Fabian likely employing that Ying in the hatch from above inside of Kitchen with Shate up there as well to put a lot of pressure on and move them out of the way of that hatch, giving a lot of space to the Ying. I really appreciate that Penta isn't bringing the Montane and is instead opting to bring plenty of soft destruction in the buck 
and plenty of smokes from both Glass and Ying. They also have all potential hard destruction. Goga and Pengu have block, brought the Thermite and the Habana. That's going to mean they can open up the construction tunnel as well as the drop downs. Well, they have been pretty efficient in clearing out these roamers. And evil geniuses just getting a little aggressive there. You can see the bottom of the main stairs, NVK waiting for a fight. But he's going to be called out, and it's unlikely that Penta will fall to that trap. An opportunity now to maybe even use one Candela to try to get NVK if he can't get back to sight. And Gersma Mina is very easily spotted. NVK and BC were both playing located. out of blue tunnel as Jonas surveys a site, the site from above. He has that hatch open inside a bar, and that's a lot of opportunity for him to catch anybody from EG who decides to rotate. When Elamine does detonate, giving off See one of the attacker's locations to the defenders as a second hatch now gotten from Goga. They'll get the one inside of stock. They have not been able to successfully open up Kitchen unless they hit the Thermite, use his exothermic charge. But he is now down in Memorial with one of the charges left. If he was able to see over that table, the legs would be spotted just inside of blue of BC. But no, Pengu's just going to hang on and wait to see if somebody will peek him. Patience from the Thermite. You see a little bit of a dance there between Canadian and Pengu. Neither one to give away their positions. Penta trying to use the angle over the wall to potentially get those bandit as he attempts to trick. It's not happening though. Like he's spooked by the shotgun blast. Just gonna hold passively deep inside of Moto. Reevaluating, it seems that a different call has been made from Penta as they are no longer going to be pushing that church wall, which appeared to have been their primary objective early in this round. When they'll be stopped, even though they have that extra exothermic charge that Pengu wants to use, he's gonna need to manually get control of church itself before you can use it because there's no way to get rid of those bandit charges. They'll now instead use it from above and open up the hatch inside of Kitchen. And here come the smokes. Rather, a frag grenade gets tossed out from Buck. Now the smokes come down. And Young very smartly retreats inside of Dirt Tunnel. Two Candelas go down, a third now as well. And a swift coordinated push. Necrox eliminates Fabian, but Shate refrags. Canadian down. But the Ying completely eliminated. It's going to be a gunfight as Young takes out Pengu. The glass pushes in, but too close range. NBK, BC, EG, a flurry. And they'll go to match point. Looking pretty bad for Penta right now. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you bring a Thatcher. The ability to get those bandit batteries and then open up the church wall as you clearly planned would have been oh so important. Do you see what Jaeger just did there? He's, his unique ability is that he can take multiple enemies in one engagement with his magazine. He's able to take <laughs> both of them down. Not quite Ella, but definitely close. And uh, now Penta is going to be thrust onto a bar defense of all sites to try and deny map one going quickly in the favor of evil geniuses. This is looking very bad for Penta. This is a map that I know that they have maybe been practicing on EG, like I said. There's lots of videos and strats on it. And amazingly, EG suffered more against 1UP than they did against Penta. A very similar composition from Penta will be what they hope to rest on. I liked what EG did last time. EG has typically been attacking the stock room, so Penta stacks up on stock. They have the smoke of Pengu playing inside there, sets down a deployable shield, and ADS fully expecting that to be the push. And with a Ying and a Glaz, or rather, sorry, a Capitao and a Glaz, that would be your assumption. It looks like Penta's gonna do the same thing. This would be a perfect opportunity for EG to attack stock, imagining that Penta would put more resources now into strip in case they thought it would be a second strip tank. Necrox's drone is outside of the stock doorway, and you can see three attackers spawning at kennels, which means it's likely that EG is going to execute towards the B-bomb site. As the marks come out, that will actually prompt Penta to their strategy. So they will likely adjust in but a moment. We still have two Penta members in Strip Club. They're just going to be holding firm, waiting for the aggression from EG. NVK likely aware of this. As he opens up the front door, trying to deny rotation. Such an important angle, that front door. But it is a dangerous one to play. That's why you put your Ash, or more importantly, your NVK on such angle. It was also Penta who got a little bit too aggressive and tested EG by peaking on two separate occasions and losing both of those fights. That's something they're not going to do this time. That patience is going to not just keep them up in terms of man count, but also keep them killing time. 
EG is able to take the site much faster if they know that they have a numbers advantage at that point. You fight for trades, or you're just simply able to uh, overwhelm the enemies. Shate waiting to take out the drone of Young. See if he gets pushed. The Capital will rattle a couple shots in through the open hatch or the open hole in the barricade. There's one member of EG waiting. Shate is currently trapped right now inside of the closet. There are in fact two people waiting for his rotation out. BC as well inside of the garage with Canadian to boot. Here comes the rotate. Shate goes down and NVK in fact the third Attackers member of Evil Geniuses waiting for that rotation. Catching out that roamer and picking him off. Now not much time left for Evil Geniuses and Penta and a man deficit. And now they have one less member of the defense sitting over by stock. See, it appears to be Pengu, oh. whose SMG 11 just barely and narrowly misses the Capital of Young. He will have an advantage in terms of range due to that ACOG. NVK second kill will get the Echo. That's his drone down, and now Young will put pressure on side of stock. Jonas sees the Ash, Pengu and Jonas adding to it, and they'll even it out. This is still anybody's game. And now Goga under fire as the Thermite punishing him. He manages to down him, pulls out. There will be a second, but Canadian, they are one away. EG looking to take map number one, and they are in good position. Final 40 seconds. Pengu inside of stock, all alone. One smoke will go down onto the deployable shield, and now pressure will go onto him from above. Inside of Cash, that is the buck of Canadian. Pengu gets droned out, but BC just sees him at the last minute. He'll go inside a bar and wait. He knows that there's one inside a garage. No heads up play by Young as he looks in, looking the wrong way. Pengu able to get out of sight. It's always frightening when Pengu's left in a 1v3 because he can absolutely clutch around for his team, but not today. EG says no thank you. Map one goes to them by a score of five to two, and the crowd very happy about that result. A pretty decisive victory there for Evil Geniuses. Almost a comeback there from Pengu, but the way that they played that last round was masterful just inching into the angles. Not trying to engage full force, not rushing into the site unknowingly, barely taking enough ground to get those kills as Penta got way too aggressive. They looked frankly a little lost at times. The way that EG was able to push, they were not expecting it. Now this could mean that simply their counter stratting wasn't sufficient, or it could mean that we saw different pushes from EG. We know this. They attacked from Strip. That was something that we hadn't seen EG really do at all previously. They had been favoring the stock attack. That's exactly what they executed in the last round. But at that point, NVK was a huge player in that, getting two kills to allow them to push the site with much more confidence. So map number two is going to be Oregon. This is a map that EG has struggled on as of late. In fact, they banned it yesterday after playing it a number of times in the quarters and even last season. A lot of potential strats to be executed on Oregon. Could play into what Pent has been trying to do using that Montane coming from Construction Tunnel, but honestly, I feel like overall on, on Clubhouse, that the operator selection was what did in Penta. You, you really got to hand it to them on attack, picking just the worst possible operators for each of their attacks. I mean, we saw Thermite without a Thatcher when you're trying to open up Church Wall. We saw a Montane rather than potentially a Glass or a Blitz or a Blackbeard trying to push in through that construction tunnel. And the way it was executed was just poorly on Penta's side, which is odd. You don't often see that from them. So on Oregon, it's going to be Definitely a challenge for Penta to reestablish some amount of dominance. We're going to have EG starting on defense, Penta on attack. Oregon, one of our most played maps in Rainbow Six competitive. Going to be a big deciding factor here for this series. If Evil Geniuses win this, they have not won out. They will not be the second time world champions yet. They're going to have to win yet another map. It's the best of five. Some of Penta Sports as well are going to need to wake up. They got needlessly aggressive and started peaking angles, and it was EG there able to capitalize. I think as much as we say that EG is an underdog heading in here, the skill level between the two is so narrow that you have to respect your opponents enough to not try and get cute with your peaks. There were so many times that they tried to peak NVK, they tried to peak BC, and they just got totally punished for it. Very early on, NVK going to get the dresser in the main hallway giving some extra playability to that corner. We have a Mira on this top floor defense, not an essential operator, surely, but very useful should the push come from the white stairs, especially. 
Now the lineup from Penta is pretty standard. They haven't gone out of their way here like they did on Clubhouse to do something new in Flamboyant. I gotta appreciate that, going back to what works. There is no rotate nor mirror window at the top of White Stairs looking inside of Generator, which is something that we've seen a lot of teams use, especially a rotate hole. It allows you to control both sides at the top. But that's not going to be their strategy this time around, unless they manage to make one a little belated, given that we are now done the prep phase. Still got those impact grenades for the potential of an instantaneous rotation. We'll see if they choose to use that. But Penta clearly shaping up to attack onto the master bedroom, which is an excellent strategy if executed properly. It does come a lot down to what Evil Genius is going to do to deny it. If Canadian potentially see force from below, he could do a lot of damage, possibly getting that Habana before she can open up any walls. I wonder if we'll see that Montane strap Sensor that was deployed. working so effectively yesterday by Penta, or rather the day before against Ents, in order to clear out Meeting Hall. Not really necessary on this site. You can see that they will pressure Meeting, though, speaking of which. Yona sits at the top of the Obama laundry stairs. Located. Managed to come in and take control of the eastern end of the Attackers main floor, the but diffuser. that Meeting Hall is going to be a big concern for them. They have both the Mira as well as NVK down from below, and Canadian in the basement knows Jonas is there. Attackers Instead of pressuring him, he's just going to wait. Yesterday, a bit of impatience from Canadian led to him being taken down early. The leadoff kill goes to him, though, as a good distraction, a peek from NVK. He'll lose some health, but the Zofia of Jonas on stairs, punished for it. Nice kill there from Necrox, eliminating Fabian. And now it's a three on five. As Gogo pushes his way into Generator, he's going to contest this smoke on the top of White Stairs. Runs out of ammo, pulls out the nade, allowing a down from Young. But it's not enough as Tengu refrags and Goga finishes off that smoke. C4 from below! And NVK with the follow up, BC with the finisher! And Evil Geniuses will take the first round of Oregon. Unbelievable that Necrox manages to make it out of that alive. He should have just waited the patience. Goga and him just trading back and forth, unable to really find anything. Canadian is there to ensure that the rest of the team is pulling through. BC just had to come in and clean up, and that was it. So a successful defense upstairs. And now we're going to see a basement hold for Penta, which is the site that we usually see things start up. When I say usually, it's not as... It's not as much of a definitive, but typically the favored site for most teams. With the newly announced operator bands today, maybe we might be seeing more as a smoke and a mirror pivotal down there. You know, there's been a lot of heated discussion on the operator band phase. And I'm excited. It's definitely going to be an interesting feature. A lot more to analyze, that's for sure, and a lot more for the coaches to do. Now, I was going to say on that last round that seeing Yunus at the top of the main lobby stairs, or the bottom half of the main lobby stairs, rather, uh, was actually kind of exciting. It was an interesting take on yeah, clearing out the roamers, the but he got outplayed by Canadian using that heartbeat detector. Uh, being go. ever vigilant, expecting what is completely unexpected, and then collaborating with Attackers your teammate NVK in meeting hall to Attackers actually get the kill. The so bomb. very well done from Evil Geniuses. That actually completely dealt with the roam clear from Penta Sports, which is a big contributing factor as to why they lost that round. I really wish we had seen what happened to Fabian. I believe as the Ying, he was playing the big window. He got taken out very early. So you lose a Zofia and a Ying, two of the newer operators to this game, but both with very specific goals in mind. That Ying is oftentimes the cornerstone of most attacks now. The ability just to have smokes is huge, but also to blind everybody in a 40 mile radius is extremely powerful too. And as teams are learning the potential of the concussive grenades from the lifeline, We've seen Zofia's stock rise. In fact, she's been one of the most played operators on attack thus far. It did look like Fabian was going to get spotted inside of Kitchen. There's some explosives from above, so Canadian will now invest on that second floor where he sees a castle plan. Very interesting castle set up there from Penta. Canadian gets Eunice. Can he get a second? No. Goga shuts him down and goes for the rotation. No C4 preemptively set up, and Penta has got that rotation ready to go for Goga as he moves back down into the site. A decent roam from Penta. It's important, though, that Evil Genius is was able to get the bandit because that means Sabana could potentially open up the mirror windows in the actual site. Mira playing in back tower, trying to shoot out what could be a rotation inside of Attic. 
There was a drone up from Young, waiting to see if the Mira is going to peek. She's just behind the match. Oh. Young narrowly misses her head. Ooh, and that's a shot that you know he's going to kick himself over. Instead, he'll apply pressure on the window. Now, even if he were to open it up, a very simple response from Amira would be that C4. Usually could claim a victim if at close enough range. But they have managed to isolate Chate, or my apologies, Peng. They've been swapping roles an awful lot recently. And they've been looking very comfortable doing so. They're going to ignore the Mira, though, and every single member of EG realizing with only 60 seconds, they have to start to actually begin to push the site. They're going to opt to go for the main area of the launch. That's bomb site number A. They buck away at the wall. One of the reinforcements there will deny some line of sight from above unless the x Karos are used to open it up, which it sure sounds like is the case. Necrox on the bottom of the stairs as you hear Capitao doing his job to be able to close them off. Fabian fires the common spots. Young Spyrero takes out Gogo. What is he doing? And they're going to go for the plan. Necrox amidst the smoke, completely covered right now. And it's going to be Young trying to keep them alive. Seven seconds. Can he get the plan? He does. And you now see Fabian getting lit up himself. And EG just needs to hang on. Will have to be a masterful take from Penta. And Pengu so far off site. Doesn't have the speed advantage to him. What a shot as NBK and Young go down and now an advantage for Penta as they were staring down the barrel of defeat. Fabian with the rotate hole opened up and Attic BC eliminates Shate and they're gonna wait. That's a double from the buck. It's all up to Fabian. Elysian, who you had seen trying to get back to fight. Miles away, two nothing EG. BC has been absolutely on fire for this match and a completely unexpected, decisive advantage in terms of rounds one for Evil Geniuses. Only two rounds for Penta. Two maps in. That's just unheard of. This looks like so far it's the best match that we've seen EG play in the last five days. And if that belief, you speak to a number of teams, they will tell you, as I mentioned earlier on in the broadcast, that when they were known as Continuum, they were team that would get more comfortable. They'd find their groove and they would continue on and adapt and change and get better and play better against their opponents. I think we saw a bit of a step back yesterday. Rogue was a very formidable challenge and really brought the heat to them. We came within one round of a 2-0 for Rogue, but EG was able to stick that landing and now they are here in the finals for Penta. A shaky start. They look like they are being completely overwhelmed. They will yep. not run a Montaigne on attack as we had seen yesterday. They will opt for a bit more standard composition, probably because you don't want to be taking those gambles when you're already down on your own map. You know, Evil Geniuses, historically, they're a team, as you said earlier, who gets a little bit more warmed up uh, the later they go into a match with any other team. And it takes them time to get accelerated and get ready and get prepped. But here we're clearly seeing, I think, throughout this entire tournament, Evil Geniuses has been warming up over the course of the whole event. It seemed like at the beginning, they were a little lackluster and out of practice. That was the image that Evil Geniuses was giving off. And then suddenly, we see them here in the finals after beating Rogue, and none of that is present. Evil Geniuses looking extremely strong. On the other hand, Penta inconceivably struggling against Evil Geniuses. A C4 from Canadian all the way downstairs in the site. Well placed to eliminate Eunice. Now that's both teams who have not had their Zofia when executing onto the site. The Zofia's biggest strength with the ability to disrupt and concuss the defenders usually will allow a kill. You can push inside from another attacker and have a proper entry, such as a three speed. You can have IQ fulfill that role. You can have a Hibana or an Ash. Not really, not really we'd see that from Capital because his gadget far too powerful to potentially lose in that kind of push. Sophia enables the rest of the attacking team to have a freer push onto the site or onto a roamer. That is taken away now from Penta. Penta has cleared out the west side entirely, and there aren't very many anchors, interestingly, from Evil Geniuses. They're putting a lot of pre presence into the meeting hall. And as Canadian pushes up aggressively, that's just giving away kills, as Pengu is not the sort of person to get caught off guard in that circumstance. But the push from Fabian using his Candelas wisely eliminates MVK and BC, who gets taken down by Shate. Necrox refracts onto Goga. There's still life as Necrox gets two. Pengu goes down, and Evil Genius is not giving up quite yet. The attack has somehow shifted over to the supply room, the north side of the building. The shotgun push from Young. This is the blast, and Fabian gets his second. Young goes down, it's all up to Necrox to get a 4K in order to win this round.
He has 50 seconds to delay. Fabian all the way in the sight, sees oh, Necrox, goes for a spray, misses the shots, and Necrox will get the down. One HP now for the castle, and Chate is planting the diffuser. Exactly, He's exactly. not going to be aware. That will prompt him. Chate expecting to push, wins the fight, and Penta win their first round on Oregon. That was a very good meeting hall clear from Penta. You absolutely have to give them credit for that. You are able to get inside of sight. The biggest advantage that they had came from the Ying. They'd lost earlier on on their previous attack. Once they blinded NVK, he was the one who was going to be stopping them as they pushed in from Kitchen. But he had to fall back. And then the rest of them, unable to cover, Penta just stormed right in. Now, defense of the top floor from Penta. And we are seeing, interestingly, a blitz coming from Evil Geniuses. Young did not see a lot of success on Blitz last time he brought him in the, in the previous matches. Instead, opting to use Blackbeard for the most part in this match, but it could work for him. I mean, if you look really far back to Young as a player, historically, he was one of the best shield players in all of North America. People absolutely feared him. You can ask any old age player from NA, I'll tell you the same. So, potential for that to work in EG's favor, but still kind of a risk. And the sort of risk that you can draw a parallel between the one that Penta took in the previous map with those Montane picks. Ten seconds remaining. Pretty crazy to think that a basement defense of EG fell apart so much faster, but they looked great on and upstairs inside of dorms. Usually it's the other way around. Teams will typically or traditionally win laundry room downstairs, and then fail to hold up top. Some teams, of course, do differ, but that is typically or traditionally what we see. We're getting a very dynamic map overall, though, and you can make it work on either side. I mean, the way that Evil Geniuses almost made that round work was the previous round, that is. They got very aggressive, and it almost worked out for them, but I'd say unquestionably too aggressive as they lost the round, and Penta, not a team to trifle with, that's for sure. Spray's coming through the window from Canadian. I don't know if he understands how close he was. Nope, in fact, Pengu was behind a reinforced barricade, so it would not have mattered. One thing that we saw yesterday from Canadian was that there were a couple rounds where he would set his team at a severe disadvantage by getting too aggressive. A specific time on consult where he jumped out of a window as Pulse, he had firm control underneath sight. He could have very easily been able to stay there and deny a plant. That is not the case. That's exactly what he did last round, though. He got a little too aggressive. All of EG almost is setting up for this west uh, window take, but Pengu sneaking up on the window itself. I don't think that Evil Geniuses will expect this. Necrox might drone it out, though. As Pengu rotates back to site, he will be plenty safe. A good call there from Pengu, not trying to get too aggressive. Located by attacker. We'd seen earlier on that Shate was down by a grenade. He gets picked back up by Fabi, and they'll double up now on White Stairs. Another grenade goes in, will take health away from both Fabian as well as Shate. A very aggressive push inside. No smoke grenades to stop them. And the smoke of Pengu manages to hit the shield of Young, who takes him down before Jonas refrags. And that's a draw, but look at Penta. They own that kill feed now. Two for Jonas and Fabian adding to BC. All up to Necrox and MVK, but Necrox, who's having a wonderful day, takes out one before getting eliminated. Jonas, three kills for himself. Fabian answers that, and Penta repels a strong push from EG. We're all tied up. EG relying a lot on Young pushing into Big Kid's dorms. I like the idea. The strategy looked like it was executed well. They baited out those gas canisters from the smoke very early on. But overall, just a good response from Penta is all it takes to deny that. Plus, we still had roamers on Penta. They could have potentially done damage from behind. They certainly dealt with NVK from below. Overall, a pretty, I would say, decisive win for Penta on that defense. An operator who I think we are still trying to figure out her place inside of the meta at this high level is Dokubi. She will emerge for the first time in this matchup in the hands of Fabian, who is having a very good game in comparison to map number one. Dokubi, an operator who's Device used more as an annoyance, but can also be used at the very end of a round to know where the push is going to come from, from the defenders, or if your diffuser is down, where the remaining defenders are who have to come and defuse, or you can even use it for 
clearing out the offsite players. It has some versatility to it. Of course, don't forget the fact that you can also grab the cell phones of the defending operators and take control of their cameras. But I think at this level, that part of her gadget, not all that useful. I'm honestly, not useful at all, unless you've got a very skilled Valkyrie on the other team who has managed to elude both the IQ and just the eyes of the rest of the attackers. It doesn't happen very often, let's be honest. Now, this is a much more even contest on Oregon than what we saw on Clubhouse. And to have won two in a row now, and Evil Genius is starting to struggle a little bit here as they go into the defense of the top floor. We do have roamers downstairs, BC in the bathroom. He's going to be putting up some mirror windows that face towards the kitchen. Meanwhile, Penta kind of unsure where they want to attack from. It seems like they're setting up to execute a similar strategy from what we saw from EG last round, but it, that didn't work at all. Fabian's first move when he was playing Ying two rounds ago was to take control of the bathroom, the showers there. He'll do the same thing this time around. He knows that the pulse of Canada isn't too far off. Spots him as he shoots out his drone just inside of Kitchen. The telltale sign of the Scorpion as Canadian what? moves, and Fabian changing weapons will miss him. The pulse has a heartbeat sensor. Fabian lights him up, downs him a good pinch from Jonas. They'll finish off Canadian but there is still NVK inside a kitchen. BC eliminates Fabian, and now you can see a double for BC. NVK gets in on the action, and there's only two left. Young eliminating Shate. Pengu out to lunch. He will have a lot of work ahead of him. He's at full health, though. BC and NVK just right now facing the prospect of any shot to any part of their body down it. The don't need to go frag chase it. They could just execute their defense the exact same way. But imagine that the pulse, while the intel gathering is gone, is detrimental to the team. The rest of them have a minute and 20 left to try to determine Pengu's location and just set up for a trade. That's it. If there's any player you want to have in a one-on-four for Penta, it's probably Pengu. BC's going to be in a nasty little spot here waiting for the aggression, though, from the Havana, who will hit that Ella charge, the Gurzmat forcing her into the bathroom stalls. Now Pengu coming around, not gonna check the single for BC and will die as a result. Evil geniuses, match point for the second time, or not. 3-2 in favor of EG. Rather 3-2, correction, thank you. <laughs> it happens. It's you know, been a long you know what it was? I wrote down the score before the round was actually over. It, I mean, when they get four kills in a row, and it's Pengu in a 1v4. And that's just it. Penta with an amazing execution onto the site. And they did, or excuse me, an, amazing, an amazingly bad execution onto the site. Evil Geniuses with a fantastic defense holding it down. So what did we see there from Penta? Pretty much about the same that we saw from Evil Geniuses. They were trying to come in through that west window, and when they went downstairs to clear out the roamers, they had initial success eliminating Canadian, and that's a lot of information as well as utility done with. But there wasn't more. It didn't cascade. And in fact, got responded onto by BC, who again, fantastic match so far for him. Cafe Dostoevsky is map number three. This is a map that Penta doesn't play. So with EG being able to take the fight to Rogue on it yesterday, some credit goes out to their NA counterparts and warming them up for it for today's match. I would imagine that Penta's not going to be going into it blind, but I know that both FaZe and EG, when playing on Skyscraper, Neither of them particularly had any strats available. They were just trying to learn and adapt. All it ended up coming down to was one attacking round. If Penta fails to win Oregon, could end up being the end for them. They're going to be executing the same roam that they had last time. They defended the basement. Castle barricades at the top of white stairs to just try and prompt Penta Sports to that aggression. Didn't work out as well as it could have last time. Let's, uh, it works for them this time. The rotation is very likely to be cut off from Evil Geniuses this time. I mean, you're not going to be able to jump out that generator window. And here you see Canadian putting down that Claymore outside just that very window. If Goga goes for the rotation that he did last time, he will be probably killed. There's potential for him to shoot it, though, in midair. We've seen that actually a lot at the rotational. Young is droning himself in and just going for broke. He'll uh -oh. head straight upstairs and just charges onward. You see there's under fire at the moment. You see there's two members of the defense right around. There's a castle up top as well as an Ella. He'll use one smoke and that'll cut the Ella off and he will go for just a pure engagement but not expecting the mine. What a good read from Jonas to take down Young. 
That was a big gamble. It won't pay off, but NVK inexplicably right behind him as Canadian will now cut up and try to take down the castle. They'll light in and a great clear from EG as they are an advantage of one right now. So the roaming not really working out for Pentasports. They still have players inside a meeting in tower, which means there's only one anchor. Chate is going to get lit up on the main stairs. He is the singular anchor right now for Penta. If Evil Geniuses reads this and goes for a side execution, they will have a wonderful time, I'm sure. He still has three gas canisters, so there's a lot of potential on him to stall out the round. Canadian very cautiously moving his way into classroom main lobby area. Over me. Reload. They're just going to wait. They still haven't managed to get the hatch, nor put as much pressure on meeting as they need to. They could simply just storm Shate at this point. This is the same angle that you saw Pengu play a couple seasons ago, where he was able to kill almost all of the team at the time, which was known as Font Energy. They get the hatch finally. They don't have any smokes available for them, though. That was Young's job. He'd used one earlier on. Oh, Shate gets downed as they hit him with one of the mines. They don't know he's down, a grenade goes in, and it misses its target, another one down. Shate somehow not being killed by these grenades. Pengu will go down to push him, and Fabian controls the bottom of the stairs. Smoke brought back to life, as Penta at least in a position to stop this push. And they will begin with Pengu eliminating BC. EG in a tough spot, as they will need to funnel in through points that Penta is expecting. Only 15 seconds. seconds they have lots of denial available to them. They do not bother to get Canadian up. They will just simply dive down themselves. NVK can't connect. It's going to be all on Canadian, who uses withstand to give one help for Zofia. But Penta wins a round that they may not have deserved. A great hold of EG stalling out in the final minutes. Certainly a lackluster attack there from Evil Geniuses. They had all the control they needed. They had the man advantage. They even got the down onto Chate. One more of those impact grenades through the mirror window would have probably secured the round overall. But good coordination from Penta, able to pick up the teammate. Pengu specifically downing two people in classroom. That's an angle you should lose nine times out of 10. Well done to him on that mirror. There was a lot of hesitation. They didn't know that they had downed Chate. So you found yourselves in a position where if they had a no point indicators had been on at that point, or if they'd had a drone available to them, they'd known that the smoke was down inside a closet. You could have one drop the hatch, one cover at the bottom of the stairs, and at that point, you now have pretty good control. You're able to get a diffuser off, and if somebody pushes you from the laundry room just to the side, you can potentially get them in a crossfire. You still waited for Penda to get back on site, seeing that they had to go through the hatches inside a meeting hall, which EG had ignored on attack. We're all tied up. This has been a very close match. Both teams somewhat comfortable on Oregon. Though EG has been trending downward on this map as a whole. Five seconds remaining. Evil Genius is going to be prioritizing that meeting hall control, as is so often seen. Not extending themselves as far as the west side of the building, which is what Penta has been doing this entire time. Chate sees that there's two soft walls here in construction, going to go for the spray. That'll cut off a lot of rotation, specifically of Young, but. Since Chate did not hold the angle, Young will get back safe, not even losing a point of HP. Chate has a lot of work he can do here, though. Another rotation from Evil Geniuses, despite the hole in this construction wall, and Chate gonna look up towards Meaning Hall, almost getting a headshot. Three opportunities to put Evil Geniuses at a very early deficit due to their inability to reinforce inside of Box. But no, Chate unable to capitalize on a single one of them. They're still trying to figure out meeting hall. You see, they've been able to get the mirror window and open up one of the walls. Necrox smartly falls off as Shate has moved from construction just to rear stage. Fabian eliminating NVK. That was the bandit playing by the mirror window inside a meeting. Pentas looked very, very good and very comfortable at being able to dissolve this beachhead that EG has set up inside of meeting itself. Fabian gets Necrox using the opening of the mirror window. Great job from him to open it up earlier, allowing that kill to happen. Second one for Penta, or third total, as Chate gets BC. And Evil Genius is now in a two on five, not looking like they have a good sh chance here. Canadian going up the stairs, pre-fires from Penta, and Pengu will get that kill. Young getting one on the flank though. He still has a lot of time to delay, but he's a great operator to do so. See, attempts this ace clutch. 
moving back into box. Here come the gas canisters to cut the rotation off. Pengu not going to be breathing that in for some reason. He's going to have to deal with the post plant now. A push from Pengu, ill-advised. Young only needs to find three more, and because of that, Penta will get much more conservative. Firebolt's going to cut off rotation. Looking under the drop, eating a lot of flames in Young, but onto half HP. He's still got a chance to win this round, but he's got to do it in the next couple seconds. It doesn't look likely as Young gets fully blind, and Fabian from behind, hearing that call from his teammate, will secure the kill. Penta put it on to match point. Opening kill and closing kill, as well as a third in between. Team captain leading by example. Penta takes their first lead of this map, and they do it on match point. Pretty remarkable. So round number eight. We see overtime between the two of them. EG has looked good when attacking upstairs. That's where Penta has to go. They'll bring a Zofia and a Capitao Young, who had gone as a blitz previously, was taken out a little early on last time that they had to attack the basement. He'll go with the Capitao, which was a strategy in which worked quite successfully. Penta had success, as you said, on this site last time they went here. Just going to try and delay as much time, I'm sure. Now, the thing is, the reason they had success here is Evil Geniuses went for a kind of a rash strategy. They tried to push in through nothing but the main west window directly into the A-bomb site, which is a huge risk. As you said, the Blitz from Young not able to do as much work as they expected when they pushed into Big Kid Storms. Ten seconds left. Reinforcements going up inside of Attic. Curious to know if there will be a rotate put in at any point. Gogad played in the back tower. He'll go back Attackers up there as the well as Shate sticking it inside of Attic. He'll have that open window just next to him over top of the hatch to be able to see if anybody goes for a repel. That's also an important position because it deprives the attacking team of an ability to hang off of those windows just by kids' dorms. You can't successfully pressure kids if there's somebody holding that window because they will see. You also have somebody up inside of Tower who will have a much better angle as well. That's Goga playing the Ella. NBK going to see him though, so Evil Genius is going to be aware of that roam deep inside of Tower. Young pushing into Bathroom, looking to clear the main hallway. Last time they attacked this site, they didn't clear out these roamers downstairs and it cost them dearly. So they're going to put a, a lot of emphasis on it this go around. Cafeteria control in favor of evil geniuses. Grenades start coming out to clear the utility. Fabian still has plenty of goo mines. He's just going to have to wait for them to regenerate. Falling back, in fact, to the main lobby, which NVK is going to catch two off guard, but only get one. No, he can't get the second. Fabian with the refrag, though he is on very low HP. Torn apart as he tries to retake Kitchen. That's efficient. They've used about half of the round. They know that most of the pressure off-site is gone. But Goga now will have to retreat very wisely, get back up to the confines of the actual bomb sites themselves. You've lost two roamers. Not always a wise opportunity for another member to play that far away in case the attackers decide to rush Brazely. We've seen that a couple times, and it has overwhelmed the defense. BC, who's having a heck of a round, he'll take out Shate from below. Very little health for him as the rest of EG lines up at the bottom of White Stairs. That's where Goga is now pushed to after he was in the main lobby, he gone up the main stairwell. Barbed wire behind him will be destroyed. That would have been an audio cue that somebody was coming and they trade BC eliminated though. What a round from the buck to carry his team. 1v3 for Pengu, a situation where we've seen that clutch factor can go quite far. And he will have to do it if he wants to avoid overtime. Some shots will rattle through the big window as he sits just underneath it. He'll go out for a kill under the Capitao. He'll be rewarded, but they know his position and almost a crossfire established just as you wait for Necrox to get into sight. Instead, Pengu will push up. It's Canadian who's trying to get a cover. Necrox gets off the defuse and overtime awaits us for Oregon. What an attack from Evil Geniuses. Clearing out those roamers downstairs, putting it on to a 2 on 4 Just the anchors alive. Good flank from a NVK coming from the meeting hall. Didn't look like Penta was expecting that. Let's go, Let's go, 
Evil Geniuses will get an opportunity to defend twice. They have looked very good upstairs. That's where they will go. Kids' dorms, where they've been very successful. They have not had the same fortunes in the basement. So if they're able to win this and then potentially take the downstairs basement, this could swing in favor of them. For Penta, this is going to be a very tough task. Fabian right now, an excellent job leading from example. Typically looks quite comfortable on this map. He's taking more of a fragging role than he does typically support. That's paying off for his team. That is kind of interesting when you have your IGL top fragging. It happens, it has happened, and Canadian's another example of people who tend to do that. It's a good job from Fabian to be able to establish that dominance. Evil Genius is going to be holding the site similar to how we saw Penta go about it. The question is, will they put more emphasis on the meeting room, which is a big priority. Evil Genius is able to exploit that last round. Penta's been very good at clearing out that meeting hall. So for me, if I'm EG, I don't know how I don't know how much resources I'm going to put inside of that meeting hall. But I mean, not inside of it, surely. But you no. have to wait for people to push through it. That is correct. Jonas, back tower, rear stage. He comes in. He'll shoot at some of the soft wall. There's nobody on the other side of it within range of his crosshairs. And VK going to be that person, that form of utility in a way, to try and dissuade the attackers, if nothing else, from pushing from tower into meeting hall. Goga going to catch him on the drone. Nothing else, though. Penta is just inside of tower. They're not, not. taking this nice and slow. They will clear attic and, by proxy, eventually, surely, the meeting hall. Fabian gets leadoff kill onto the Canadian. The Pulse had been integral in defending this site previously. That'll be, I believe, the ninth or 10th kill for the captain of Penta. He's been having a fantastic match, as has BC on Evil off. Geniuses. But Chate lit up to one bullet's worth of HP from almost every gun at most ranges. So he's going to be in a bad spot. He's still got a three-speed Ash to aid him, but it's not nearly as much as 100 HP. Clearing into the basement, NVK gonna see that drone and instead of trying to fight it, just gonna fall back to main lobby, but surely Penta will expect said rotation. In fact, no, there's no one watching the main lobby as NVK goes for run out and will get the kill. What a job there from NVK seeing the hole and seizing it a second from behind. Chate goes down, gonna get a third, gets lit up inside Armory. Elsewhere, lots of frags going down for both teams and it evens out into a three-on-two. Penta have control over Generator. The Diffuser is in the hands of Penku, though, repelling on the B windows. Here comes the push from the Capital, and BC's not expecting it. The main hallway uncovered. Necrox will refrag it, leaving Penku now in a one-on-two, but he's inside a B. Necrox gets the kill, and Evil Geniuses go up five to four. What a hold there from EG. I feel like overall, though NVK's flank was so important to that team, Necrox won that round for them. He has looked otherworldly the last two days. Typically his, I guess his contribution to the team is not always reflected on the scoreboard, but yesterday and today are definitely different. He tweeted out on the very first day of quarterfinals that he wasn't particularly impressed with his own play, even though the rest of the team was able to eliminate FaZe, and I think he's learned from that and played quite well recently. So now Penta will go downstairs, and once again, match point for Evil Geniuses. Now the attack onto the downstairs is a tricky thing to figure. Evil Geniuses had, has had mixed, mixed success here so far. A couple losses, a couple wins. And I think the main reason that they've been uh, losing is because they're unable to follow through. And then they get caught up on that mirror window, they always seem to struggle. You saw they executed a nice grenade strategy where they were throwing it through a potential impact hole, well, the impact hole that was made. But it looked like the grenades didn't go far enough as they kind of hit a little bit low and landed on the wrong side of the mirror window, resulting in a decisive victory for Penta last time they went here. Now, Penta has also been using their roamers to great effect. On the west side specifically, Evil Geniuses haven't cleared it out fully without losing anyone yet. One thing that we've seen EG use their operators to quite well is establishing crossfires upstairs. They've been very quick to be able to pinch roamers, often maybe losing one, but still getting an advantage in terms of numbers. Shate had run out as a smoke, but there's nobody there at all. He went down in construction. He's going to play just inside of blue tarps. So clear here for EG. 
Opening up the Junk Tower doorway, BC gonna give his position away. Almost saw a kill there from Fabian, but luckily for BC, he's playing very passively, expecting the peak to come out. Rotation hole, so he can potentially move into Cafeteria, but doesn't look, they vault, look like the Vault Prompt is there. He's going to instead adjust to this long angle into Kitchen. Now, Penta has actually fully fallen off the roam now. They're just inside of Meeting Hall and downstairs, which is not really a roam on this site. You need to be able to establish that control early on and keep it as a defensive team to have any chance in the later end of the round. Necrox had droned BC, and Fabian very smartly had pulled back and will join Shate down. Now, one thing that Pengu played very well last time on this site was those back stairs. He's still situated up there. It doesn't look like EG has used any real opportunity to discover the drones. BC's drone in particular will spot the Ella. Canadian gets lead off onto Goga. Goga's had a bad day so far and may not have an opportunity to redeem himself on this map, but Yona's positioned as Canadian pushes in. That is a good trade for them as Penta able to get that refresh. You can see that Penta is anchored very decisively on those tower stairs, and Evil Genius is maybe putting a little bit too much focus onto that, as they could potentially just push into the site. They don't have the impacts from Canadian anymore, so they're gonna have to use NVK's Ash Charges to open up the hole that they so very desperately want on that mirror window. Young preps the fire bolts. Hopefully this time one will go into the mirror window to disable it, and here comes the push from EG. Looks like BC primed with one of those grenades that have been so good. Area towards the bomb site denied. Shate just misses that frag grenade and uses his last toxic babe. Necrox breathing it in will try to get out of there in time, but cannot. He gets felled on the stairs, but not finished off. Young just waiting to see, but Jonas, his second kill. That's Young down as he had pushed in. Plant going off will give away the position. They're gonna hope that NVK can cover. He'll get one, NVK manages to stick it, and BC gets Diffuser down as BC takes out Fabian before Pengu eliminates NVK. It's 2-2, two, two. and Necrox has been downed on the stairs, as well as Shate, who's been downed as well. So we'll come down to the Mira, battling against the Buck. On the line here is the potential for EG to be able to go to series point. You can hear the Mira coming down, but Penta will win this one. BC falls, Pengu plays that smart, and we will have an 11th round. Nice try there from Evil Geniuses. Mostly due to a well-placed gas canister, they will lose that round. Necrox narrowly are not avoiding that death. If he had been able to get out safely and plant the diffuser at a later part of the round, he would have had a, a better round overall for EG. The top floor is locked for Evil Geniuses. They will need to go down to the basement for the third time this match. The previous two times, they were unsuccessful. So this could be Penta tying up the series if the trend line holds. For EG, a couple notable changes. A Rook and a Mute come out. EG had put a lot of investment inside of the meeting hall hold, and Penta methodically cut it off every single time. They were able to come in and sweep through them, almost first time every time, by eliminating the mural window and then taking NVK down, who was playing at it inside of Pantry by the kitchen. Instead, I will imagine they'll keep more bodies on site itself. They won't be bringing a castle. NVK bringing the ACOG of Rook, be able to provide long-range assistance. So the roaming Rook is something interesting that we see from time to time. I would be hard-pressed to imagine NVK actually roaming himself. It's likely that Evil Geniuses is probably going to be much more passive in this round, given the way that their aggression did not favor them. Last time, last time they attempted to push into Penta. Penta very good at gauging aggression from the other team and simply waiting out the round or going in with their own aggression should the round call for it. So our final round, no matter what, will EG prevail and put themselves one map away from keeping the world championship on North American soil or will Penta tie it up? And if Penta does tie it up, that means we will be guaranteed bank as our fourth map, as no team will be able to win it out 3-0. Very slow clear here from Penta. They just want to make sure that they don't have to deal with any flanks later in the round. And because there's no basement on the west side, that's pretty easy. Neck rocks the first kill of the round, though. Goga goes down. Nice headshot there on the roam. That's the Capital gone. So big. That is probably your most important pick of these five operators because there's no smoke now and no isolation. Still though, Pengu, arguably the second most important, is left up. If you had taken out the Hibana, then that would mean the hatches would be safe. That would have been 
depriving them of the control upstairs inside of main lobby. Flashbangs going into bathroom. There are no defenders here, but Penta just trying to be as sure as possible. The problem is, though, that's a huge waste of utility from Penta. A lot of flashbangs tonight. I think I just saw that all of the lifelines from Eunice are, ex are ex ex used. I, I, I'm not sure how they could have used them so early in the round. It has me a little bit perplexed. Last flashbang there from Pengu as he pushes down the main stairs. A run out, run out from NBK over by Tower. He's looking for any more frags he can get, and that aggression is clearly not stemmed for EG. And they're still making very good time. Penta's been able to get onto site quite quickly as one smoke is expended from Young. That'll be down. It won't cut off the push from the stairs, but will stop them from being able to drop through the hatch. You see that they are lined up at the bottom. This is typically when your Capitao would be able to get those smokes down and allow your team to push relatively unhindered. Necrox sees the Ibana of Pengu, gets a shot off, and will give his position away as he's joined by Jonas. They are at either doorways. This is what we say when, when we say establishing a crossfire. Necrox still just going to wait. There was a mute jammer on that wall. And there will be no way for a drone to be able to get in from that angle to discover him. One of the impacts the from Zofia go off downstairs, and Penta looks like they're ready to drop. But still, as they hit the barbed wire at the bottom of white, EG holds an advantage. Shate jumps up on top of Laundry. As smoke hits him perfectly, he'll get about half of his health taken off. He'll have to pull back. Only 20 seconds left. Necrox inching up so close. One goes down. Pengu doesn't look, sees the mute. Necrox and Canadian, it's 5-2 for EG. And Necrox still uncontested. EG, one map away from the championship. Well played retake there from Evil Geniuses. Gotta give a lot of props to Necrox clearing back in the meeting hall. Interesting that Penta established that control and then forfeited it later in the round. They could have potentially just held that push from the flank and had a much better time when actually executing onto the site. Though some amazingly good smoke play as well from Evil Geniuses. We'll say no to that. Necrox definitely gonna be the MVP for that round. Now, with this being a best of five, that means that we take a break every two maps. So the teams will huddle, talk amongst themselves, and we will let our experts dissect what we just saw. A stunning lead right now of two maps for Evil Geniuses as we head to cafe for map number three. Matt? Thank you, Kickstar and Interban. Great work so far. Seeing Evil Geniuses go two up, and indeed, just one from being the retaining world champions. On my desk, Fox8 with Zoronic and Wilkie. Now this is a match we've looked forward to. These are the two teams that ideally we would have put on a stage to contest the world champions. You want the reigning ones. You want a brilliant challenger in just any world championship. And here at Siege, we want EG and we want Penta. We've got EG. I'm not so sure who's lining up opposite them. Let's talk a little bit about EG first and what we've seen across those two, because that's going very well. Now, EG, throughout all of their performance, this is the most dominant that they've, se that they've seen. Uh, especially from the previous match, you could argue that if NVK got a first pick, EG would win a round. If NVK, unfortunately, didn't go in his favor, EG would lose a round. But now, all players are playing absolutely well. Necrox is, again, showing up immensely for their team, playing in sight. I you can't just pick a player and dissect them because the whole team is the reason to their success. And it looks like Penta is being blown out of the water right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they, they lost, uh, was it the third or fourth round that they definitely should have won. Um, and then again, the sixth round, they, they just, there, there is something in Penta's play that seems to be misaligning. Yeah, the sixth round was like really crucial. Penta was like doing their comeback in that round and it looked like really good. They should have won that round, but there was a problem. Like, they set up to drop from the kitchen hatch and do the plant below the kitchen. Uh, Junas should have been covering the long hallway with the glass, but for some reason he started to rotate and allowed two people from EG to rotate from the church to the uh, armory side and just kill everyone yeah. inside of the armor that dropped from the kitchen half. And that would have been then, you know, a pretty much 100% win situation yeah. with a team like that in those sort of positions. Yeah, Junus just kind of folded it a little it, bit. It, like, it felt like there was a lot of comms problems in, in Clubhouse from Penta's side. Yeah. 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 Uh, map two, 6-5 um, in overtime to Evil Geniuses. That Penta, 
So it felt like we're not sure this is the Penta we know. And from throughout map one, and then a comeback felt like it was coming. Yeah, it well. seemed like they were building up for uh, for a comeback on on, on our, our map here. But uh, I don't know. It's the first time I've ever seen Penta be scared. Yeah. Mm. They look when you when you look at their face uh, face expressions, they they look rattled. They look scared. They did in Clubhouse and. A after losing this one, now we, we we see them take a break and have a little bit of a talk about um, yeah. what to fix. Well, again, EG, just like in last match, they gave Rogue a little bit of a chance to come back, and it looked like if they didn't close it out too quick, Penta was able to bring it to overtime. But fortunately for EG, they play really well when their back is uh, against the wall, and Oregon being one of Penta's strong suits, you'd imagine that they would have taken it. But the fact that EG got it, it's looking grim on Cafe, especially since Penta doesn't have that much experience that EG does on the map. I felt like in, in Oregon, Penta just didn't respect enough EG. Like, they they went for 1v1 fights all the time when you can fight the numbers. Like, the huge, biggest problem, in my opinion, was the Oregon uh, top floor defense. Like, EG plays it every single time the same way. They have two people upstairs, one in kids' bedroom, one in generator, three people near the kitchen. So you have two options. You can go for the kitchen, clear the roamers from there. Penta tried that. Didn't work out. Or you can go upstairs. You hold the angle from the school bus, the white stairs, with one guy. One guy goes to the garage and holds the angle from there that no one can see for you to the generator. Then you go to the generator uh, floor uh, wall, open it up with Termite or Hibana, and take the tree on one fight against Necrox, who's playing smoke on the generator. And then there is the one guy in kids' bedroom that you need to take out. And you, again, have three people against one guy at that moment. So why don't you fight with the numbers when you can yeah. and just ignore the guys in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. But I, I just think Painter just wants to take those one-on-ones all the time, and it's, it's not paying off. Are they here as a team who are thinking, we're going to win this thing? You, we know they're very confident in their attitude before games. Are they here thinking, well, we're going to win this thing? So individually, they're all trying to win this thing, but as a team, it's not functioning. Well, it's, a, it's a good thing you mentioned the whole confidence thing because sometimes if you're confident enough building up and you get smacked, which kind of happened start, yeah, in yeah, Clubhouse, yeah. it's it's really hard to come back from that because y all your dreams were broken like this and now you got to you know wake up and get back to it. Yeah, that's something that has a very big part in this, in my opinion. Penta felt very confident and so did EG in both maps. And the decisive win by EG on that first map could have confused Penta, you know, questioning their play. And like we said, they're not looking like the Penta that we've seen previously. So I think that and this amazing crowd have to contribute to. Yeah, contribute we know EG to. are a team who feed off a crowd when they're with them. And when they're doing badly, the fans get behind them to try and lift them. Penta haven't got quite as much support here in this arena. There's a lot of great fans for Penta here. They're going to have to lift that team. Now, Penta are a team that we've talked about over the last, well, five days, coming up to day six here, how they always look just like every match is the same match. It's the same day. They're always ready. They're always here to do business. And they looked like that again, but something has tilted them and tilted them early. We are looking here, though, at a team who can shake that off. Yeah, they are second-guessing themselves, which we haven't seen them do in any of the matches leading up to this game. I think EG has surprised them a lot. And EG, like I said, is playing absolutely perfect. The whole team all around, great, great chemistry. And especially that mid-round pep talk, Bacon's got to be giving them some type of words for this, for this last match. And we all know how big of a yeah. play coaches bring. And Bacon's arguably one of the best. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. On the opposite side, someone like Shas is really going to have to get his team back now. Because they, they are falling apart. And they, uh, yeah. they, they need a pep talk as well, I think. To go out of this 3-0 in a World Championships for Penta would be brutal for them and not the final I think that anybody here would actually you know, want to enjoy. We're expecting this to be a great contest. If it's 3-0, that's a story in its own right. I've always said that in like, all the competitions we've ever done, but I also quite like a fight to the death and to see a team lose on the day because they were beaten as opposed to they lost a match. Yeah, and before the match, we talked about that. Uh, last time when Penta played in the finals in Gamescom, they had a lot of aces on their sleeve yeah. against Elevate, and they smacked them. This time, we have not seen anything special. There's, I, I think all the cards are revealed already. And that's, and really that's, strange, that's a problem. That's a huge problem with all the resources they have. Yeah. There's nothing left. And the creativity they've got. We've had Fabian here on this analysis desk. And he's talked about how, you know, they created something 30 seconds before coming out and, and got on with it. And I said to him, well, you know, why don't you create a bit earlier and practice it? Because like, well, sometimes we don't know what we're doing. 
And there is also one big problem coming up in the next map. It's a cafe. The one yeah. map that Penta doesn't really play at all. So if there is anything in Penta's back pocket, and if they are going to show us any surprises, it needs to be on this third map of cafe. Remember, it's the best of five. So we can go beyond this and see what happens later on. It'll be bank afterwards and coastline to finish if we get there. It's not looking quite so likely that we will. So does Penta turn up now? And do they bring us stuff on a map that we don't normally associate being a strong one? Or do EG continue on their charge towards lifting that sledge and keeping it with them for a second year? Let's find out. Back to Kix and Intero. We'll go to Cafe. Is our world champion going to be crowned at the end of it? Let's find out. Welcome back after a short break for the teams to recuperate and you at home to be able to go get something to eat, drink, or to simply stretch your legs. And what I think is surprising most people, Penta trails by zero to two. Evil Geniuses winning on not just their own map of Clubhouse, but also on Oregon in the 11 rounds. And here's the thing. Wilkie was right on the money when he said that Cafe is a map that Penta really just doesn't play historically. Now, we're, they are very well known for having pocket strats on their off maps, so there's still potential for a fight back here for Penta, but something that Evil Geniuses are going to try and capitalize on, surely, level of inexperience. This was a map that Rogue is one of the best teams in North America on, and this is a map that Evil Geniuses was able to take the fight to them yesterday. So Very you're, going, you're going against a team that is known amongst the community as one of the best cafe teams, period. And now you're playing against a team that, while known as one of the best teams, period, doesn't play this map. I mean, we talked about how Evil Geniuses decisively won the map ban phase. And while, yes, it's very short, you only get to ban the two maps for each team, it's still an important part of the match. Now, something to keep in mind on that note is that BKN, or Bacon, the coach for Evil Geniuses, used to work under Shaz, Penta's coach, just a couple seasons ago. So there might be a little bit of inside information going on there from Bacon, an understanding, if you will, of Penta's map picks. Potentially not enough, enough adjustment between seasons from Penta to trip up EG. Now, as a result, EG looks primed to take this final in a very decisive fashion. What I find funniest about this is that before the actual, before the actual matches themselves, I had spoken with both teams, and they were both equally happy with the yep. way that the ban phase had went. In fact, Shaz's exact words to me, Coach of Penta, was, watch out for Cafe. That's good to hear for Penta. Potential for a lot more maps as a result. And you're right, I mean, again, that plays into those pocket strategies that Penta are so well known for. And you're going to be joining into the top of Red Stairs. Bandit Batteries and New Jammers trying to disrupt that from Penta. Looks like they're going to possibly be holding inside a piano moving into this round. Now that's e exactly the strat. EG has played against a team that is known to incorporate Mute Jammers quite heavily to disrupt the drone usage of teams on this site. That team is known formerly as Flipside. They're not currently with an orc, but they are essentially... Oh, a grenade from Canadian will cut me off mid-sentence as Goga. He's had a very bad day, and his day will not improve at all. Shate, as well as the bandit of Jonas, who's lost half of his health, will try to come in to tag up. And right now, EG with a very quick start. But Necrox kills himself on his own ex Kairos. I thought BC was the one who killed himself with his explosives. Well, he did down him, I believe, and then the ex Kairos, still being mid-detonation on the wall, finished him, the Habana of Necrox off. So he didn't kill himself outright. You know, he just finished himself off. Still need the kill, in a way, from Penta Sports. That is, that's terrible that you've lost your Hibana that early. You do have yeah. a little crouch hole that you can wriggle through inside of Cigar, but you don't really have the same opportunity to be able to push from above. Luckily, they had already managed to open up the hatch inside of Cigar Lounge. They can look down to train from above, where Pengu sits underneath. A mute jammer will mean that any drone that is thrown down will be disrupted. And there you go, Pengu just stops it very quickly. You see Evil Genius is pretty proficiently clearing this top floor. Penta has mostly fallen back to the middle floor, but they still have a roamer all the way on the basement, which can be very influential leading into the round. Interestingly here, Evil Geniuses have dropped the diffuser at the top of Red Stairs. That was Necrox when he died putting that there. So 
they're going to need to retrieve it. There's not a whole lot of time for them to do so. NVK's use of Jackal will detect the roamer downstairs. BC takes down Pengu. And now BC having a heck of a round and a match. There's only 23 seconds left. Canadian not necessarily watching his flank from reading. Eunice going to take him down because of that. And Young going for the plant right now inside of A. It doesn't look like there's an anchor to stop him. The retake rushing in. Bandit not going to see him, but will eventually get the kill. Young goes down and BC from behind. No, Eunice with the flank gets MBK. Chate covers the flank of the Bandit and wins the round for Penta. What a round there. And what a retake. Excellent individual performance from Jonas. EG found themselves at a disadvantage early on with Necrox gone. I can't believe that Bandit was able to just sprint right in. No real awareness from evil geniuses whatsoever. They had a good start to that round, but Penta being the team they are would capitalize. You know, retaking onto the middle floor um, of Cafe is one of the most efficient strategies that we don't see played very often on this site. And I think that is really telling of what you were talking about with Shaz, the coach of Penta, when he was saying, watch out for Cafe. I think they were anticipating that exact play from EG. Just go for the plant, see that it's open, and go for the plant. The collapse from Penta, just ruthless, absolutely ruthless. Taking back into the site, EG didn't have anything to stop it. They were cut off by the castle barricade between the door from mining inside of train itself. It was BC who had dropped down from Cocktail after eliminating Pengu. He had control of two areas of the bomb site. Now there are two bomb sites and then the area in between. He had control over dining as well as train. He did not have any sights on mining whatsoever. There was an open mirror behind him, but wasn't able to fight back. Wisely watching a different area than the bomb diffuser itself was just sitting there completely unprotected remaining. after Jonas came back to site yeah, and was able to finish them off. So that's a castle barricade working very well, and probably as, maybe not as intended, but at least doing the trick to help the defenders. So with that said, bar and cocktail, the site for evil geniuses, first defense. This is the second round. Imagine they expected this. They're gonna bring a Capital as well as a Sophia on behalf of Penta. This is a site that makes Ying very strong too, but she will be left off. Like you see Shate be able to put a lot of pressure onto Freezer, while Jonas provides some support with that lifeline, probably in Sagan. Still a lot of attackers in terms of a lot of disruption on the side of Penta. Nadian going for the C4. Will he hit it? No, he will not. On the top of the roof, there is a little bit of a ventilation there. That will stop that C4 from hitting its mark. A nice try, though, from Canadian. It saved Goga, who holds the diffuser, who was on a drone at the time, as well as Pengu, who'd gotten away from the blast radius. They'll drone out the second floor as a drone skirts in under the doorway just beside the reading room and check out pillars. Goga off of his drone, looks to see if there will be a push on red stairs. Of no real issue being able to get this wall inside of Cigar piano and it will go. Pengu's pushed up into Cigar Shop himself and he will now drone and he is very, very close. Now, as he is on a drone, Canadian with that pulse uh, cardiac sensor could potentially be able to spot him, but not anywhere near close enough. Young on his Yokai drone, that will be something that Penta will have to discover the location of or else they could lose the diffuse plant when they start to go. So they have control of Cigar. That's a very important part of this attack. They also could potentially push into Piano. However, they're being halted because of this brilliant mirror window from BC. Very common mirror window, but still very useful. You can see Fabian going on to those east windows, going to try and grenade the mirror window to disable it. BC, conscious of this, will not be playing anywhere near it and will actually get the kill because of his rotation. Pushing into the site, though, Necrox gets a double kill! Pengu looked poised to get that one, but couldn't lock it down. Now it's all down to Chate and Eunice, the last two attackers for Penta Sports. 52 seconds. They have a lot of time to work with, but they're not in great positions. Pixel spot occupied by evil geniuses as Chate moves towards Cigar. Downstairs, Eunice going to get hit by a Gersmot. Be very disoriented. Last 30 seconds here. Chate still has plenty of tools available, as well as Jonas. They can probably work their way, but Necrox, after getting picked back up, will get kill number three. He's had such a good day. 
Jonas downstairs gets pressured by NVK. It's seen NVK playing that Ella had worked just outside a reading room for most of the time against Rogue. It was easily who was dispatched to counter him on Rogue, and now Jonas will do so. Same operator, same relative area. Jonas, though, running out of time. 10 seconds and four members of Evil Genius is left. They'll look to equalize. Inside, Jonas will go. Necrox, four kills in one round. EG equalizes. As you said, one to one now between the two teams. Successful defenses both, but Penta able to hold that middle floor considerably harder in the current meta of this map. Likely disheartened with the results so far. A lot of long faces on Penta, but they still have potentially three maps to be able to mount a comeback against Evil Geniuses. Playing on a map that you are not the most familiar with is never a fun prospect, especially not when facing elimination in what is our largest tournament yet. Penta will go back to defense. Being successful in mining means they will go up to bar and cocktail, usually the preferred site of the three. Well, we'll rather say, we'll rather say two because the <laughs> bakery almost never ever used. It doesn't really count as a site. It's indefensible on cafe and that makes a lot of sense. It's so exposed to the outside that it just doesn't even get looked at for teams. It's not the sort of site where you could go and create a creative strategy that might give you a chance at winning it. It's the sort of thing where, hey, you want to win? Lots of runouts, lots of C4, lots of disruption on the defensive side. That's your best chance. See Penta here going for an aggressive mirror setup, counter to what we saw from EG. They're putting one in the freezer itself and over by the bathroom. It just occurred to me that if the Penta does win this, we will see all five maps. There is no way that we will not see Coastline in order for Penta to win, and that would be very exciting. As much as I'm sure the crowd would love this to be over relatively quickly, it's always nice to see an even contest between the two. EG manages to take control just above Hatch, over top of Red Drones activated. So, as Evil Genius is thrown in through the skylight and the red stairs, as you said, they're just going to be looking for the the anchors, but they're not there. Penta is it's pretty loosely anchored right now. They have Eunice inside of Cigar, Pengu inside of Piano, and Fabian and Chate, the only two real anchors anywhere near this site. In fact, Chate is over by White Stairs. It's an interesting hold here from Penta. Goga has pushed into Cocktail, so that's a good position to hold it, certainly. But still, pretty aggressive push over towards the piano. Canadian looked like he was going to be able to toss a grenade, and what a throw, Jonas! No chance at all. Good drone work, and Canadian will lead off his team's second attacking round with another frag grenade kill. Now he will go to droning himself as BC gets oh. the down. He tosses another, but cannot get it. Goga is down just over by Bomb A and gets Pengu eliminated from Canadian. That is the sledge undeterred. But Goga will be picked up. And now EG does hold an advantage. They are in the driver's seat of round number three. The only real thing they have working against them is the time. Only a minute left. They have the ability to shoot out from the bottom. It's the buck putting in significant work. Still, the Echo Drone remains. And that is a crucial tool in the final minutes. Another grenade goes down and just misses Fabian. Push back up very smartly onto White Stairs, expecting a push from Evil Geniuses. Right now, it's a standoff as Young takes down Goga. Suppressed MP5 of Shate eliminates Necrox, who had had a great previous round. That's going to leave double at numbers for Evil Geniuses. Fabian and Shate remain. Two operators you want on site, but Fabian downed and finished off. Three kills for Canadian. He'll lead by example. And Shate, the Echo, inside a cigar, under fire. He'll push out. Shot through a wall. The diffuser not in his hands. BC comes in. Shate eliminated and Evil Geniuses takes over the lead. Map number three on Cafe. That attack for EG. Mostly focused around the grenade play. Excellent job for them to disable all of the first line defenses from Penta. Those frag grenades, unquestionably, the reason they won that round. Almost saw complete capitalization. BC unable to secure his kill, though, with the grenade. Still, fantastic work there. 
Now, Penta are going to be going on to attack of Fireplace Mining Room from Evil Geniuses, which is a site we haven't seen them, I believe, defend yet. Mining bar and bar, so... No. EG will go downstairs. Three donuts on the side of Penta right now. Having a little bit of tr trouble getting traction in this match. We're right. inches away from seeing this go all the way in EG. I think Penta is looking very shaky right now. It's kind of odd. This is not the team that has been here for the last five days. Ten you don't often see this from Penta. Actually, I don't think... Is it safe to say we've never really seen this kind of shakiness, this indecisiveness from Penta ever before? I mean, the Season 6 Finals are one thing, but it just kind of looked like Black Dragons were really on point. Black Dragons was the most feared team that season. They had the crowd at their backs. What's being, uh, what's the commonality here? EG is obviously the favored team of this crowd, and they also have the fans at their backs. So Penta, right now, try to hang on. They are trailing, and we'll have to make this attack work. 30 seconds as they scale upwards towards the top of the cafe, put some pressure on the southern windows just side of Piano. They'll have to clear out the second floor before making any real concerted effort onto the second. The third floor is their priority. Some teams will expend a lot of utility up top to defend this wall that you see Shate being able to buck through. EG. Not evil geniuses. Not one of those teams. They want to hold downstairs as much as possible, which you can see there are two roamers who were on the bottom floor. They just rotated back into the middle floor. There's no roamers at all in terms of floor coverage right now for evil geniuses. All five in the middle as MVK starts going down. That's a mirror popped from Pengu, who was on the Twitch drone. That will cause PC to now have to move. He's inside of reading room, which is going to be an important place for Penta to be able to push on. They have no real contention whatsoever upstairs in barn or cocktail, and that is the floor that they can be able to destroy to get at BC, who is meleeing a castle barricade. An opportunity to potentially run out. Pengu on the terrace just next to reading room door. BC could end up surprising. They will lose the hatch upstairs as Young, who has taken some damage, pushes off of A inside of the hallway. In Red Hall, it's a very dangerous position. BC with the C4 from below. Great job. That's Chate, the buck eliminated. He was inside a piano, I believe. Great job there to deal with that. Opening up rotation downstairs. It seems like Evil Geniuses are going to want to go for rotation. As Eunice takes down NVK, it's nice and even between these teams. Young goes down as well. Goga on the top of the red stairs. Penta's looking pretty strong as Pengu gets another. Necrox eliminated, and it's all down to Canadian and BC who's gonna miss a lot of shots. Now, just Troy, team captain of Evil Geniuses downstairs. He has the heartbeat detector, he has the information, but he's gotta go for a 40 second retake onto the site against four players. Candela's onto the red stairs. A retake against Penta in a 1v4, almost an impossible situation. I do not envy Canadian whatsoever. C4 will miss, and that's one of his levers of control gone. He's amidst the smoke, he sees the Ying run down. He'll take Fabian, but on the stairs, there's one more member of Penta waiting for him. Jonas gonna move up to the actual diffuser itself. Goga manages to take Canadian down. There was no way he was getting back to the site. Penta reads that perfectly, and we are tied. Two to two. Great hold there from, or a great attack there rather from Penta as Evil Genius is unable to deny that push into the site. You still the crowd trying to instill their team with confidence after that loss. It's a constant effect really. And as you talked about, it is kind of parallel to the season six finals where Penta lost against Black Dragons using that Brazilian crowd. And that was a Penta team who looked fantastic oh, all yeah. season long. They come in, they managed to dispatch their opponents in the very first round, which was Ainz in devastatingly efficient fashion, and then struggled against Black Dragons, got 2 0 and bounced from the tournament. They've been able to keep step very well, though. This is a map that we cannot stress enough, is not in the stable of maps that Penta usually plays on. No, but they're pocket maps. There are so many. And when Penta has an opportunity to create a new strategy, they really go all the way. And that's why you're seeing this go back so back and forth as compared to the other two maps, which, while Oregon was, you yeah, know, 5-6, still seemed like Evil Geniuses had just the ever so slightest edge. 
five seconds. One thing that these best of five finals will be doing for teams is expanding their map pools. You have to. You have no choice. You only get two bans. For Penta, they ban Chalet, a map that both teams don't play and are notoriously poor on. They ban Skyscraper, a map that both teams don't really play, but Penta definitely doesn't. That would give EG the advantage. That means that of the remaining seven maps, you have to figure out EG is probably going to ban our two strongest. So we have to expand our map pool to maybe get one or two maps that you are proficient enough on to be able to contend with the best in the world. That is Cafe, and that was exactly what Shaws had said when he said, watch out for it. It's a map that they have practiced, and they might feel more comfortable on than before, but still not one that they are notoriously proficient at. I mean, clearly it goes both ways, too. Evil Genius is definitely putting up a struggle here, as we have the round count still even, and their grenade work has been amazing, but Penta countering it this time thanks to a well-placed ADS from Goga on that Jaeger. And now evil geniuses are going to have to reevaluate how they deal with that mirror window. As you can see, just taking it a little bit slower. One thing that Penta has now learned from is how strong those opening frags are from EG. Both rounds they have attacked, they have gotten a kill with a frag grenade. And now Goga very smartly sets a device down to protect himself from a similar fate. Opening up that red stairs drop down with the Habana. Eunice gets NVK. That looked like it might have been on the east balcony. It's not a good angle to lose as Eunice is just in the middle of open area. No, it was actually above as NVK dropped in the skylight. Chate gets the second for Penta. BC goes down. Evil Genius is now in a bad spot. Three to five. Wow, what a shot there from Chate. Seeing the head of Young and just picking it down. Shatai on the very nimble and quick operator, putting in good work for his team, has denied EG the ability to get inside of the building. Canadian finally does so. He'll go downstairs in dining room, and they have been rebuffed every single time they have attempted to execute their strategy. It's all up to Necrox and Canadian. The former having one heck of a day. Probably his best day so far of the tourney, and one of the best days we've seen out of him in the previous two seasons. It's a perfect time to do so. They still face a deficit being down in a 2v5. Nadine's gonna have to work miracles here as he comes into the red hallway very slowly. He has enough time to justify this, but he's gonna have to face a mirror window, which will likely result in his death. It will. Pengu, a pre-play C4 on that wall, gets the kill. Necrox now the last attacker. Coming up from the same exact spot will give away his position and have to relocate. Coming over towards the main lobby stairs, he's just looking for a pick or two. He's gonna have to ace in 15 seconds. It doesn't seem likely. Sees the a defender on top of the wheel, and he's not going to win that fight. Tengu takes it swiftly, putting us on 2-3-2. Two, to two. two rounds defending the second floor of Mining and Penta has two victories from their efforts. That one, though, particularly flawless. I really like that they didn't allow the efficiency of EG's drone game, which usually helps them entry so well, to get even one pick. They killed a ton of time, and in their haste, EG ended up paying for it with losing two operators early on just meant that the rest of their strategy could not be followed through with. A peculiarity as we see Pengu sitting on Montane right uh -oh. now on a bar cocktail push, which is the defensive site that EG will go to. You know, we saw Penta bring Montane earlier in the season on the first map, Clubhouse. It brought it, I think, two, three times. It didn't really work out for them very well. So this is a questionable decision when you're so far down in the series for Penta to be bringing out the pocket strats. Although... Could be exactly what they need to assure dominance as we are one round away from match point for Penta. I really do admire the uh, previous seasonal champs of Penta trying to make a strategy work involving an operator whose, I guess, utility we don't engage, we don't see at this level. Montaigne has fallen out of favor long ago, but has now been replaced by Blitz effectively in most strats. Blitz being much quicker, yeah, able to fire back, and seems to pair quite nicely with either Glass or Ying, two operators who are not really played that much by either teams. It's actually quite refreshing to not see a Ying Glass push every single time from either of these teams. So some credit is due there as well. Penta looks like they might be pressuring heavy onto those white stairs. Now generally when you have a Montaigne, you want to push, position him best with the spawns to address the site. And actually it could just be a repel in 
on. No, just going to be the roof. Go figure. That means we're going to see a very typical attack through the red stairs. Nothing going to be varied at all. I was kind of hoping when Penta brings the Montane that they do something magical and different, but no. That's better safe than sorry for Penta. Last time Canadian had gone for a C4 kill through the hatch, he'll fall off. No real point this time around. They're just sitting and waiting at the windows, but Shate able to eliminate Necrox with a grenade. That's going to give Penta an advantage. And the smoke down oh, two is located. instrumental. Smoke, of course, one of the few operators who is able to repel Monty very quickly and easily. So now Monty able to get in inside a cigar lounge. Another exothermic charge goes off as Favian picks off Canadian. That was the pulse. And the shield will be spotted by NVK. Crouches to avoid being seen. That shield goes down at any point. Scorpion can tear through what little is exposed of Montaigne very, very fast. You see going for a peek there, actually just going to take some damage, not dishing any out. Pangu coming around the corner from White Hallway, and he's going to spot out BC, calling it for his team. Crossfire trying to be established there from NVK on the White Stairs, but it's a Montaigne, and he's got a pretty good arc to hold. Fabian eliminates NVK. That's the White Stairs pressure gone now for the defense. And here comes the push. Mirror window disabled, and the last defender is Young. Inside a freezer, he goes down. Penta put it on a match point. That was an absolutely incredible push by Penta Sports. They just simply bulldozed their way in, and every single operator they found didn't last too much at all. I would imagine that that is probably part of the reason why Shaws would say, watch out for Cafe. They now sit on match point. Penta could take their very first map. This is EG's pick. So that would be an answer to Oregon, which was taken just a map previously by Evil Geniuses. Now we still have a donut on Evil Geniuses' side. NVK struggling right now to get some kills. He's done a good amount of work as Jackal, which is kind of an interesting role to put him on. But still, putting his team in a bad spot. He is the number one fragger for that team historically, and they're looking for him to get a lot more work done. They've got him on fragging rolls as well. So as much as we like to say that kill depth doesn't really matter, and if you're not racking up kills, then you can still yes, be contributing to your team. His primary job is to get kills. So if he's Five failing to do to that, that means that he's not following through on his obligation to the team. Whereas if you have somebody playing on anchor, they might not be needed so much to get those kills themselves. Fabian is going to be exposed for a very long time as he gets back inside, just on the terrace by reading room doorway. He'd thrown a Valkyrie cam down under the window by white stairs. It could be easy to spot with that bright glue, bright blue glow around him when they go on it. There's not a lot of potential for you to kill Fabian as he goes for that run out. East balcony is kind of elevated. BC is going to try and light up one of the feet of Penta Sports, but it's not going to happen. That was Favian rotating down. He'd seen it for just a second and will miss yet again. He does see the Yokai. Ooh. BC just narrowly misses. He was in a prime position to, with two beautiful opportunities to put Penta Sport in a deficit. But couldn't make it work. Could have been so influential had they got that Yokai drone, but it's not going to happen. Canadian will drone out Cigar Lounge, see the sea of barbed wire. Last time that he attacked onto the spot, he played on that landing of Red Stairs. His frag grenade had gone in and taken Shate down, or Jonas rather, the bandit who was playing by the barbed wire, but nobody playing tight enough nor close enough to really be receiving those frag grenades. They take out the default camera just over top of reading room before BC can push him. You see Fabian takes all but two damage off of his health. Shate though eliminates NVK, who's still yet to find a kill. That will not change this round, and might not even change this map as match point. Penta has a lead of one in operator count, looking to close this out. Slow going here for Evil Geniuses. After getting the deficit early on, they don't have a lot going their way. They've cleared out that middle floor, and they're looking to shoot some defenders from below, which has previously worked for them due to some great grenade play. BC still has those nades in hand and could potentially use them. And he hasn't gone for it yet. Only one expended from Canadian, on the other hand. BC gets a frag onto Pengu. Very important kill there. He's been having a fantastic series so far. Yes, he has. So your mirror down, who was on the hatch, oh my, my. That means that there will be no pressure upstairs inside a freezer. Shate does have a rotate hole if he wants to move in, but right now standing, 
by the bathroom just watching an open panel on the window. Canadian gonna drone himself in. Sees that his drone is destroyed and now can be very scared of Eunice, who is the bandit inside of Piano. Teammate droning him in, and it's going to be pressure from behind now for Eunice as the panel gets opened up. He can't hit his shots, but from behind, Canadian hitting his, and Necrox will get the kill. Evil Genius's control over Piano and man advantage. Sees the echo, but with the hammer out, it's not going to matter. He's actually going to die to Shate Young with a double to respond. It's all down to Shate, though, with one HP. He gets the headshot on BC, but Young a 3K. And Evil Geniuses put it on to 4-3. Trying to keep their chances alive and close it out on Cafe, rather than roll the die on Bank, which is our fourth map. It was the only map that Penta lost since the group stages started. They fell to it by a score of five to three to Evil Geniuses. So they have to feel confident, but you know that this is potentially a map that one that they're strong on. Penta is answering the call. They'll go with another Montane push as Pengu sits on the shielded operator. Interesting that they would put Pengu on that because Pengu has such a great shot and is so dependable when put on pure killing rolls, you're going to put him on an operator where he can't really do much himself. Typically, typically considered one of the top fraggers for all of Europe, not just Penta. But uh, you're right, it is kind of, it, as a result, it's kind of odd that you're going to have him on the Montane. He has been very efficient at zoning the enemy so far, but it's still kind of an interesting risk that they're taking. Evil Geniuses now, they are going to be going for control over Piano. They do a much more conservative Mira strategy on this top floor so far in this match, but they could potentially change that. They're going to actually open up a rotation, it seems, possibly into Bathroom as well as the far west pole or wall of that freezer, which is going to give them a great sight line once BC sets up his mirrors. So they're doing a bit of both. Kind of interesting for Miji. It's similar to what they did last time, though. Well, early window shot out, and they'll mark it just to make sure that there's nobody diving through the windows. You see Canadian got flying through them earlier yesterday. But as you said, conservative being the word, that's how EG has played as well, not opting for those runouts, which, well... A huge gamble can leave you wanting if you are unsuccessful. Shate up just by the A windows. You can see one of the defenders on a drone, or rather a camera, and will get off quite smartly. Canadian situated in a place where any drones that enter in through the piano, cigar, or the red hatch side won't know his location. That's a lot of coverage that Vigil's ability will have to deprive those drones of his whereabouts. Here comes the mirror window, obviously holding it late into the round. Very smart. That means that if there were a twitch on Penta, they wouldn't have been able to get the mirror window early on. Of course, you can't know that until the round actually starts. So, conservative, again, being the word. Now, Pengu at the top of red stairs. He's just looking to deny any flanks once this round really gets going. And Penta's going to see that there is a vigil on Evil Geniuses who will fall back. That is the Canadian who's going to go down to the bottom floor. Two rotates there, now inside of Freezer. A grenade from Shate. It will sail off, but claim no one. Necrox, the smoke had fallen early to a frag grenade. Last attack for Penta. Canadian, a run out. He'll take Shate down, hoping that his team can push this to overtime. The last time we saw overtime, it went strongly in favor of EG. They were able to steal Penta's map away from him. That was a beautiful play from Evil Geniuses. They read the grenade that happened from Chate last time they defended this top floor, and then Canadian responded by rotating all the way downstairs, expecting it. Yuna's gonna take out Necrox. Pengu has control over bathroom. Goga gets BC. And that was a very good play there. Necrox distracted Fabian, taking NVK. The second time around, this Monty push that we see from Penta is absolutely crushing EG now. Canadian once again in a situation where he will need to clutch. It's a 1v4, taken down to next to no health. He'll take Goga, but he now has a shield in his way. Very difficult with only one. Be able to eliminate a Monty, but Penta takes their first map. We're going to go. Bang. Next up, what a good push and a great strategy for them to be able to close out Cafe. That Montaigne really seeing some excellent use from Penta, and that's exactly what they needed. They were inches away from being eliminated in a 3-0 sweep. But they stepped up and said, no, sir. Now you could see Shaz there, the coach in the middle, trying to 
tell his, t his players exactly what needs to happen moving forward on bank and potentially coastline. NVK failed to get on the board for that matchup. So sitting at zero kills and seven deaths, that is an extreme detriment to his team, especially when he's relied upon to carry a lot of the weight when roaming or doing entry. So he will need a bounce back performance for Goga. He's able to redeem himself. Had a slow start to maps one and two, but played quite effectively. That Monty push that we've seen Penta roll out a couple days ago, and now as well, has been almost unstoppable. No team has been able to really deal with it, and struggled, and now EG as well. Though on Clubhouse, it fell apart early on. Cafe, no stopping it. Yeah, it has seen mixed results, I'd say, between maps, but uh, like you said, Cafe definitely a, a dominating map for Penta when they bring that Montane push. Very interesting still that they're going to put Pengu on it of all players. Usually, when there's going to be a shield on uh, Penta, we see Fabian be the one to do it, but Pengu stepping up for his team. He is a versatile player, surely. And as they get ready to start the next map, again, Bank, a very open map. Leads a lot of opportunities for flanks, a lot of opportunities to invest two whole minutes of your roam clear into the round for attack. A map that EG won earlier on in the group stage. You cannot stress it enough. Penta has only lost one map prior to today. It was banked to evil geniuses in the group stages. Penta and EG both coming out of group A, and they met to fight each other in the second day. The winner went on immediately to the Invitational. That was Penta, who did win the series by a score of two to one, but lost on Bank. Bank is also Penta's pick, so Cafe was EG's, doesn't work out, Penta looked very strong. Are we going to see an answer from EG here? Troy alluded last night to the fact that his team loves to play that map. In fact, if he recalls, the only time he'd ever lost bank as a team was to phase on the very first day of the quarterfinals. It stands to reason that since it was Penta's pick, they're going to bank, they want to go to bank, that Evil Geniuses is, is going to play a very comfortable game, a very relaxed game, one they would expect to play on this map. And then we're going to have Penta probably expecting the way that... Evil Geniuses handles things. So, counter strats, I'd say, incoming for Penta. I'm very impressed with the way that they were able to adapt on a map that they didn't really play. And people ask, why is Penta one of the most feared teams in the world? Why, out of six seasonal championships, has Penta won three? The performance on Cafe is a very good example of why. You have great players who can play whatever role they want. They can make up strategies on the fly that are able to outsmart their opponents who have counter-strated likely correctly, but can't capitalize on an opportunity to beat them when they're running strategies that they've never seen before. And as you expected, the versatility of Penta really shining through. Now, they still have a lot of maps to go, so it could go in favor of EG. They only need one, one more, really, to lock this out in the best of five. And we will, uh, we still might not see Coastline. It could potentially be wrapped up. So there is a slight possibility. Now, Bank is a map. You said EG really do, does like it. And they're going to be very comfortable going there. I'm wholeheartedly, again, expecting Penta to bring some direct counter to the way EG plays. Maybe some garage pushes. Maybe something to cut off the rotation that EG is known for establishing upstairs when they're roaming on a basement hold anything that Penta has found, and they are the one of the best teams when it comes to finding those holes in the attack or defense of, the, of their opponents. Teams just getting into the lobby and we'll be going underway on bank in just a moment. Could we see the victor of the second annual Rainbow Six Invitational Crown over the next couple rounds, or will Coastline await us as the ultimate tiebreaker between two global juggernauts? You only need to win five rounds to do it. Evil Geniuses loading into bank. See if they can make it happen. Now, I'm going to be looking for which team starts on defense. The Rome game that we had seen, a term that has rolled out quite extensively from Evil Geniuses, was not as fearsome on Cafe as it was on the first two maps. On both Clubhouse and Oregon, EG was able to rotate and catch Penta off guard a number of times. Cafe a map 
not as necessarily well suited to that as Penta locked down the stair control and deprived the evil geniuses of the ability to get back to sight, forcing them to take engagements at a disadvantage. Evil geniuses will go downstairs for the first defense of Bank, one of the largest maps in the map pool and one that can play out very differently depending on the team. Now, You've also seen evil geniuses run upstairs in that CEO office. That is a strategy that has been popularized in North America originally by Flipside Tactics. So I guess some... It hasn't really worked that well. It hasn't really worked for evil geniuses, but Flipside has seen some success on it and swears by it. We'll see if it will work at all. Should evil geniuses go up there at any point. Of course, I don't think they would pick another site unless everything on CCTV downstairs falls apart. We'll see. We've also seen a little bit of success on that CEO hold from the Latin American region as well, who I think overall is the most proficient region at this map. But they're not here. It's going to be Europe versus NA. Ever so close of a final to have. And as Penta moves their way into the top of square stairs, they're going to be looking for all those roamers. Evil Genius is a team that really likes to roam on this basement hold. Canadian, you could can see, just primed and ready to run up those server stairs. Going to fall back, play it safe, play it smart. Like the way that we've seen shifts in bank, you've seen some teams only dispatch one roamer, putting four either on site or very near on the basement itself. Support out Clubhouse, you put all five downstairs. That's one thing that bank has changed into, to really depends on the actual teams and how they feel comfortable playing it. Some teams will run three roamers. For example, Counter Logic Gaming running three players very far off site. It helped them out in the semifinals. And because of their strong play on bank, they were able to get to the finals in Gamescom to play against Penta. A bomb has been located. Really like this setup here from Evil Geniuses, kind of telling of where VC will be playing. Of course, with the only piece of a non-destructed wall, uh, but could potentially work. Maybe catch Penta Sports off guard. There are no anchors anymore from EG. They were initially in the round, but they're playing very passively now on the site. And pressure going onto those main stairs from Penta. It's a position that hasn't seen a lot of use if you look far back, but in this Invitational, it is a very important spot. And this exact setup is what we saw when they fought each other first. NVK bottom of stairs with one concussive mind, Jonas, positioned on the level. It was joined by company as both of these concussive blasts will hit one another. Fabian takes out NVK before Young has his back. That's the cat in the Penta down. NVK still searching for a kill, did not get one on map number three at all. Jonas comes down and both Necrox and he will be totally caught out. Young loses his health before Necrox is there to get his team, but Goga taking out Canadian. It is back and forth. Pengu, what a shot. We'll leave just the smoke of Necrox. He is Diffuser on stairs, though, with 40 seconds. That's a lot of control to have. All he needs to do now is delay. He's got the perfect utility to do so. As Penta attempts the retake, still two gas grenades on Necrox. Chate going to drone, try and find out exactly where Necrox is. That's very wise from the attacker. He's not going to take any unnecessary risks. Necrox just waiting. Here's the Habana pushing, sees him now, will get the headshot. Pengu goes down, 12 seconds left. Necrox pushes upstairs, gives up the diffuser, but he could potentially stop it from above. Gonna be fighting with Goga. Rather, that's Chate who wins the fight. Necrox goes down, and Penta take round number one of Bank. Smart for Necrox to reposition himself, assuming that Penta was going to use one of the remaining two operators at that point to push him from open area. But they didn't. They both just stacked up so that if he had to go and fight on the Diffuser, there was a second member there to take him down. At that point, he lost complete control of the Diffuser. Goga sprinted off with it, and Necrox was put in a, an almost unwinnable situation as... Penta knew where he was going to push from. So first round goes to the European team. EG will look to respond on attack. Young playing Blitz is look comfortable on that, will spawn over in alley and likely look to try to take CCTV with it. And Penta will have to expect a shield. Because of the prevalence of shield operators, we've seen a rise in lesion as well. These traps work effectively against the shield operators, forcing them to drop their shield to pull the needle out of the foot of the defender or of the attackers. You can see a bit of a team ace there from Penta as every single one of their players got a kill. Well done there on that first round. That instills a lot of confidence in each other and will likely help them boost that morale moving forward. Evil Geniuses have brought Young on Blitz. 
Combination which has seen three. mixed results similar to the Montane Shield from Penta Sports. Both of these teams having their own little pocket shield ready to bring out whenever Bomb they need it. Attackers. Attackers have recovered their Reinforcements attackers inside of Cafeteria. That's telling of Penta wanting to roam pretty heavily on the middle floor. Pegu gets back onto site. Fabian will likely play close to site as well. Playing inside a CCTV or server guarding the entranceway to, from either the escape tunnel or the actual stairs themselves. That will give Legion an, oppor or Legion an opportunity to be able to deal with any push as those Q traps will go off, alerting him the fact that there is an attacker pushing in from that direction. Not only strong in terms of the fact that it makes them have to pause and can slow a very quick push, but also gives valuable information to the defenders as to where their push is coming from. Both of those things combined together are a reason why Legion is seen so much. In addition, of course, the fact that he can stop the shield push as well. Not going to have cleared out the roamers quite yet. Penta still inside of that open area waiting out this round. That's Eunice and Fabian now back to back trying to hold each other's flanks. And they're gonna be addressed from the side. Canadian impacting into small office. Going for a spray into cafeteria. We also have Goga who's roaming in that position. Now we've actually seen this before. Last time these two teams met, Gogo was here. The difference was he didn't have those two extra reinforcements on the cafeteria wall, allowing him to play it much more fluid. Canadian was getting a drone escort. Both Jonas and Gogo will invite themselves back into the basement, blowing the hatch inside of the office just by open area. A minute and a half burned off of the clock, and EG still trying to make inroads to the site. Okay, hits the barbed wire just at the top of White Stairs. And a very strong sight play now from Penta. Currently hold the lead. Momentum from EG, largely gone. Waiting for Penta to respond. Seeing a Gersmot mine detonated late there. One that Goga had placed much earlier in the round. Canadian looking to pressure onto server, possibly get a kill. Get that man advantage, but the player yeah, inside a server is playing you. very safe. That is Eunice on Vigil as he peeks the drop down. Not much time left here for Evil Geniuses. They're going to have to get a little bit more aggressive. Ten operators still alive as we are just seconds away from hitting the final 30. BC punishes Jonas. It's the Vigil who's playing offsite earlier on. The smokes go down and Young will drop, but Goga there ready to catch him. He sprints away towards White Stairs. Away from EG able to get in. Canadian trades off Pengu. And they now have control of CCTV. They can go for a successful plan. BC will use his life as NVK takes Fabian down. Goga finishes off with little was BC. Canadian, though, a big round, leaving just Shate. That Echo Drone still very much in play. Diffuser picked up, but he's running out of time. He will have to do it manually as the Yokai Drone shot. Shate knows Diffuser going down. EG just waiting. NVK gets a kill for his team. We have a ball game. It is one to one. No successful defenses yet. Both attacks seeming very vicious. Slow build there for EG on the top floor to clear out all the roamers, but once they had achieved that goal, absolute dominance. Teller's office and archive, so Evil Geniuses who had favored that second floor site once they go to one of two bomb sites on the first floor of Bank. As you very smartly pointed out earlier on, Evil Geniuses had not seen a lot of success in fact, their defense upstairs not paying dividends whatsoever. They're able to get overrun by FaZe despite pulling out everything that they could. I really like this from Evil Genius is the fact that they're going to try and mix things up. It really does say that they're a dynamic team that's willing to take risks to win. I mean, sure, you're up one map, but still, every round matters quite a lot. Now, this bomb site is much easier on the roamers as when they come back, they have another avenue they can use. That's that basement, which oftentimes the attack will simply ignore. These angles being opened up by evil geniuses are fantastic. We've seen them utilized before. It just means that they're going to have to maintain control over open area and cafeteria. ACOG on NVK will allow them a long angle. He plays inside of archives itself essentially put a lot of pressure onto the attackers and rob them of the ability to see inside of the site largely unabated. Especially if you're sitting in behind the actual archives itself, you can see through those archive 
racks a lot easier than the attackers can, as you know where the attackers are largely going to be coming from. Your position will be only available to the attackers via drone. We'll make sure that stocks itself is clear, and Jonas, who's droned himself in, will now vault up through the, the window, attackers dropped the and he is firmly inside. A lot of teams will have somebody roaming either inside of that electrical or janitorial closet to the right, and then one inside of the conference room. There's nobody there, and a drone from Fabian will let Penta know. Evil Genius is prioritizing that middle floor and bottom floor, as we've seen them do before on Cafe, which is going to mean this clear upstairs from Penta isn't going to see anything. Now, this is quite interesting. Penta is focusing on a main lobby attack, which is the best attack if all you want to do is ignore the roamers instead of engage them directly, because there is no flank to the main lobby. The most that Evil Geniuses can do is come from above, but that's already been cleared out quite efficiently from Penta. These holes that EG opened up earlier in the round, working against them now as Necrox goes onto one bullet's worth of HP. This is where a dog instead of a Rook could potentially have made a lot of difference. Though Rook, though that armor from Rook could be a key reason as to why Necrox is alive. They're going to put a lot of pressure onto that wall now. You see the lifeline get pulled out and shoots one concussive down on the stairs. See, that was NVK who was playing down there. And as the concussive mine goes off, he'll know that there was somebody pushing. Very smartly, NVK will fall off of that flank. Only a minute remaining. Penta still trying to get more control. So just pushing in slowly from the main lobby. They see the mirror window, which is set up to counter this exact attack, and they're going to be hesitant now. They're going to have to reevaluate a little bit. They've opened up a hole in the wall here, and this hole is going to allow some of the attackers to play at the angle. Necrox goes down quite swiftly as Fabian gets him peeking wide in the sight. Pengud lost some health there, almost able to stop it before those Xkeros go off, though Goga now charging into the site. Young is felled. But two Canadian, where does he come from? Goodbye, Goga. Goodbye, Jonas. Another C4 goes off. Canadian right now holding the round together for his team. That's the leadership they need. Now Shate comes in. Pengu takes out BC. That crowd goes quiet. It's still 2v2. You can hear the metal detectors beeping in the background. It's NVK and the Valkyrie of Canadian versus the Hibana and the Ash. They'll have to outduel two of the best operators on attack. You can hear Canadian working away at the wall. NVK takes one down. That's all up to Pengu who takes out NVK. It's 1v1. Canadian has four kills. Diffuser going off. Canadian will need an ace in order to stick this through. Off of the plan he goes. He'll just waste time. And Evil Genius just has the lead. Only a 4K there for Canadian, but surely an ace in spirit as he plays that about as smart as he could. A beautiful job there. A round that clearly went in favor of Penta. Shifting away. And now the crowd is back into it. They've gone quiet for about a map and a half. Re-energized. EG now with the lead, still looking at championship point. They'll go to attack. Because None of the defenses had been successful up until this point. Penta has an opportunity to go back down to CCTV, and that is exactly where they're going to go. Goga, a slow start, but now pulling more than his fair share of weight for his team. It's going to be a lot of pressure on Penta's roamers this round as Evil Geniuses haven't brought a shield, which means they're going to be focusing a little bit more on clearing out early in the stage. Also means that the brute force push that comes from EG eventually when they hit the site is going to be a little bit less, well, let's say one-sided, as you don't have an indestructible shield to work with. Five seconds left. Penta does not seem very comfortable with what they had originally designed to be their strategy, as they are nowhere near close to finishing off all their reinforcements and set up as the prep phase has expired. You saw a couple members of Penta start to move around and shift. That suggests to me that their original strat that they had in mind will be undone. They'll go elsewhere. You know, on one hand, props to Penta for being able to adjust in the middle of a round and decide they want to do something differently to counter the play from Evil Geniuses. On the other hand, it also shows indecisiveness. Sometimes if teams are facing deficits or have been losing a number of rounds, that indecisiveness could show that they are breaking under pressure. In this case, it's not really an attribute that Penta has amongst their core five members. And with the amount of brain trust that is available in that team, I would have a feeling that that change is just simply done to try and confuse EG. It's entirely possible as EG starts clearing out those roamers. They're not going to find anyone just yet. 
Don't think we even have a roamer from Penta. They are mostly focused on the site right now. At least four of them downstairs. Still waiting to figure out where the other one is. Garage, Chate, just spotted him out there with the Yokai drone. He was the last defender left alive last time Penta went downstairs because of how far away from the bomb site he was. Unable to accomplish anything really because surprise, surprise, evil geniuses are ignoring Garage. And then they just needed to wait. There's only one real way out of the garage itself, especially for a three armor. It's not gonna hoof it all the way to the front lobby. They'll manage to blow open one of the walls inside of CCTV, but we'll need to work away at the pressure that is being applied to them by the Mira staring straight at BC. You know, in a way, having your uh, Echo all the way back in Garage is a smart thing. In a way, it also means there's no rotation potential for him, which is what you touched on earlier. Young successfully baiting out that C4, but he's going to get pushed back from the gas canister. We have seen a down outside Garage. NVK not ignoring that Garage. Shate, some great hold there. That's all, I believe, three of the gas canisters expended for the smoke of Penta Sports. Fabian, a little bit ahead of himself there. There's still plenty of time here for EG to play this out. NVK could get picked up. Doesn't look like the defense is trying to secure the kill. C4 almost going off there, but not quite. Penta with some good communication. The last smoke goes off. No C4s for them. Still 30 seconds, so Young will have an opportunity. That is all of the utility from the defenders at the moment deprived. Shate finishes off NVK as he went frag hunting inside of the garage. He'll likely get on his yokai and try to stop them. You see the pulse pressures up. BC waiting. Young manages to get the defuse slightly down before the yokai knocks him out of it. And now Canadian is going to have to help his team. He sees the head of Mira. Cannot connect, but Necrox eliminating Jonas. EG just running out of time. Now Goga steps up. He'll down one. EG was in good position, but just not fast enough. Penta holds steady, and they will tie it up at two each. Running out of time for EG. Penta hung on. That Yokai drone won the round almost single handedly for Penta. Also, the fact that Chate managed to disable NVK pushing in through that garage. Everything that went Chate's way, he triumphed over. Triumphed over. So now, Executive Lounge CEO off is going to be the defense for evil geniuses. Something a little bit different for the North American team. They could potentially still change it. They've got a second, but no, it locks in at CEO. So they're very confident in this, despite the fact that Penta is aware it could happen. They have this time brought the Montaigne on the Penta side. Fabian going to be the one bringing it. Tengu going to have a gun this time. So CEO we saw once, if I recall, potentially twice against FaZe in our first day of group phases. Like I said, this is a strategy that they have scrimmed against Flipside a number of times. The team forming the notice flip side wanted credit, so I'm going to give it to them because apparently it was important that they get denoted <laughs> for the fact that this was essentially their strategy. And if you're going to use a site that oftentimes seems unviable in North America, it's almost assuredly F3 who will be the one doing it. Five seconds left. Some cameras going out in the lobby. That's two that will give angles and different portions of the actual lobby itself. That's three cameras in the lobby, including the default camera. So we'll have to uh, have to get very lucky on attack. Here, one camera already gets shot as well. Kind of a predictable camera outside there. We've seen a lot of runouts on the north windows. As soon as players figured out they could do it, they started doing it. And it has actually seen mixed success. I mean, a lot of Latin American teams making liberal use of it. Sometimes even two people running out to the north side of the building. Very dangerous, though. It doesn't look like EG is prepped to do that. Doesn't gonna matter, really, as Penta, again, coming from another side of the building. Looks like it could still be a main lobby like attack. Is that's a, I guess a fair way to address this hold on the top floor. There's nothing wrong with it. it just means you're going to be coming in with a height disadvantage. EG had looked very good in the first two maps, being able to stop the push from Penta. They have slowed down that success, and that's in part largely because EG doesn't appear to be playing anywhere near as aggressive, but also it appears that Penta has learned and adapted. And those adapt, those adaptations, and those changes can make a world of difference. That camera is designed only to see the balcony from above. Very difficult for Penta to be able to spot it. We'll give information as Necrox now looks to roam. Canadian takes out Pengu, who doesn't need a shield. The Monty confronts NVK before BC picked off by the sprinting ash of Shate. NVK Ooh. goes for it, but very smartly Penta situated. Necrox on the flank, takes out Shate, and now sprints in through archives. He'll look to go back to Tellers. Canadian, who'd gone downstairs, gets exposed. 
Looking to see if there was anybody inside of Escape Tunnel. The Monty will push Young, and oh my, what a duel for the ages, but you cannot pressure a shield, Bobby, and a bulldozer inside of sight. Take Young out of action, and now they will go for the plant on the desk of CEO office. Canadian, though, creeps up. He manages to get him, knows there's a shield incoming, and he will get out of there. Sees the Thermite, can't win that one. Neck rocks up from the main lobby stairs. Will down at least Goga. Now the last attacker is a shield. That's Fabian. And the defuse plant is not down. So Necrox, all he needs to do is wait. Maybe didn't see that Claymore. We'll see the shield of Fabian lay down some fire, just trying to deny that pickup, secures the kill. Gonna take this slowly. Here comes the smoke. Fabian gonna need to try something brave here as he possibly goes for a plant. Baiting it out, goes for the ADS. Necrox can't hit his shot, and Fabian wins it. How does that happen? Look at how animated all of Penta is. Necrox could have just simply ran out of time there and played it smarter, but decided to push an ill-advised strategy. He could have just used that clock to his advantage. Instead, he got a little greedy and it bit him. Now Penta finds themselves with a lead. They're up three to two. They'll go to defense. They'll go to Teller's office and archives on the main floor. It was an almost successful CEO hole, by the way. Very close. Necrox, while he almost just barely lost that round, also has been stepping up throughout this whole match. So you can't put too much on him. Ultimately, he had to come back from a one on two clutch. So that's always somewhat difficult. Now, pretty even, or pretty askew scoreboard here, as you can see. Fabian and Canadian having fantastic matches right now. And NVK, interestingly, still not yet to step up. Only two kills. Now, I hate to bring this up again, but he is the fragger for Evil Geniuses, often referenced as the number one fragger. So I think that might be a lot of the reason Evil Geniuses is starting to struggle, because they're not getting all the kills that they want from their mainline frag. And they're going to be running very heavily on this top floor for players right now. You got to expect one or two of them is going to fall back. I mean, sure, it's not a basement hold, but still, top floor is only so useful. If I remember correctly, it was Penta who did a strategy very similar upstairs just outside of CEO involving Fabian who was playing on the Legion at the time. A couple rotates in and out of that conference room inside of the actual office itself. Of course, now you see Fabian is going to be playing the Ella Chate on the Legion. They'll slow them down. They'll also force EG to have to spend a considerable amount of time clearing both the upstairs as well as downstairs. You saw some barricaded doors up. And that means that EG will have to get both floors before they can start to get to the main one. It's a lot of coverage for the attackers to have to expend and can kill a lot of time, leaving your anchors and your site players in a much better position to capitalize as the time runs down. You can see Canadian droning up those main stairs. He's just looking for his first point of contact. Meanwhile, NVK cutting off the rotation in the hallway. It's likely to open up that wall with an ash charge later on. The explosives used here, that's actually, I think that was Eunice using an impact to try and get another angle. MVK not gonna be able to get that one because Eunice is prone, very wise behind this couch. Slow going for evil geniuses. They've taken control, interestingly, of the basement, which will actually aid them quite a lot if these roamers upstairs choose to rotate doubly. Concussive shots from the lifeline will go out. BC looked to put some pressure on the window. Now a third from Canadian, and Jonas is as disoriented as he can be. A fourth and final shot from the lifeline will hit the vigil. They haven't been able to do much. It did look like Canadian might have seen the legs of Jonas as he was moving behind that couch inside of Executive Lounge. He will get droned. Fabian, though, managing to somehow eliminate Young before BC gets Jonas as he vaults. That was BC playing on the window just by Plaza. He'll now rappel down. Look to try to get inside. Fabian now, though, smartly rotating from the basement, heading towards the main floor. There's only a minute left, so they've killed a lot of time. That was a very unenthusiastic push there from Evil Geniuses on the top floor. Eventually, they got the control, but all that time, all they needed was one single person to drone because Eunice was behind soft cover, of all things. He wasn't really in a good spot to hold out. Goga doesn't have a scope on his MP5, but he will use his C4 very poorly. And now he is in a bad spot for this round as he tries to go prone underneath the A desk. Only 30 seconds left as 
Evil Geniuses, traps for the push. Fabian not on site at the moment. You can see that Goga, Pengu, and Shate will start to get towards the doorways. This is going to be tough for Evil Geniuses. They don't have a ton of utilities left. A great shot from Goga. Oh my, his Canadian falls. You see Pengu trying to peek around that corner. But BC from above takes out Goga. That will allow Necrox to have a lesser challenge getting inside. Shate takes out BC. He goes for a second. What a shootout from the Legion. EG left with NVK. He hasn't had a good game so far. It won't get any better as Fabian finishes him. Match point for Penta. They have seized momentum. They are one round away from setting it to map number five. Some really poor coordination there from Evil Geniuses, especially on clearing that top floor. You have to reference the fact that there were three people trying to fight Eunice on his roam, and not a single one of them was droning. Sure, it's a vigil, but still, you can get some information from the static around the screen of your drone. Didn't happen, though, and as MPK started his drone, it was too late at that point. Young downstairs had already died, and the advantage was a little bit in favor of Penta, meaning it was just an even out once they got Eunice eventually. One thing is for certain is that this looks like the Penta team that we have seen all week. Furthermore, yes. this, looks like the, this looks like a completely different Penta team that we saw play Bank previously. It was EG who had some very strong rounds. Fabian, though, top fragging for his team. Did not end up with the top frag last game, but finished second to Pengu. He's had a very good day. For EG, some individual performances that will need to be strengthened if we head to coastline. They still have two rounds to throw this into overtime, which will be needed if Evil Geniuses choose to win out completely on map number four. So now Pengu is the shield operator. Yet again, like you said, that is such an odd yeah, rotation in Penta. Bobby and having a really good round with him. But they are going to be attacking onto the basement this time, which is a little bit different. So, Evil Genius is going for the same strat inside of Red Hallway with that mirror window, although it's being set up very late in the round. This happened the same way with Penta. Last time they went downstairs. A late setup isn't the worst thing in the world, but if Penta themselves can actually figure out that that's happening, they might be able to capitalize a little bit on it. Pengu pushing into server without any amount of contention whatsoever. He is just swiftly in here, establishing control. Chate trying to fight someone inside a cafeteria. That is Canadian. He laid out, lays down some fire. Chate's going to be put on to half HP. So a good early gambit from Canadian to be able to distract the Ash. Goga should have no problem with the exothermic charge. He's now going to cut off a push. He's going to try to bait out a C4. BC still behind that mirror window shooting. And that wall will get blown quite successfully. Young slows a Yokai drone, though. As you can see, he'll hit to Disorient, but doesn't really hit anything. The second exothermic charge goes. His ex Kairos gets shot through the actual site itself. Attackers Fabian from above to trying to determine if there's anybody up on the second floor. A very early smoke, 60 Attackers seconds in, and one of your most valuable resources at stopping that Montaigne from going in and getting a plant off behind him is gone. Still a lot of C4 likely though on the defensive side. Evil geniuses can pull this out. Pegu trying to block the C4 as it comes his way. It's gonna be a gas canister first though. Shate holding a hard angle as flank watch at the top of White Stairs. If somebody such as NVK, who was roaming, is able to capitalize on that. It could spell disaster for Penta. You hear the blast from the Yokai drone in the background. Pengu still will go in. And another plant from Goga will start. They'll go out again, and it looked like the last remaining smoke will go down. That means that the smoke should now rotate. The Yokai blast will give its position away. Still a C4 for BC. Might be trying to use that Yokai coordination with the C4. You drop the shield from the Montane, and then you get the frag. No Yokai yet left as Fabian gets NVK. C4 is not going to do anything. Montane still has plenty of HP. Here comes the push and the plant from Goga. The second C4, though, will take down Goga, the Spaniard. Now it's an even match here with only 45 seconds. Chate still on that flank watch. Will get Necrox, who's made that very same flank many times before. In fact, the last Invitational. Heartbeat detector still in hand is of Troy, but a team kill! BC eliminating Canadian, the Pulse. And now he will not be able to make the push as the defuse plant comes down. It's two versus four. Eunice from deep inside of the server stairs will get BC. Young responds onto Pengu. There's only one defender left to deny this, and it's not gonna happen. Penta win. Bank put it onto the final map of this best of five. Five maps between these two teams in our grand finals. Could you have it any other way? Penta winning both theirs and EG's maps, and EG winning both Penta's and theirs. So Coastline will await us 
for our tiebreaker. Of course, these teams have to be this evenly matched. The way that Penta managed that Montane shield was beautiful. And you saw that Evil Geniuses was aware that these were all fakes. They were trying to play around it the best they could. Ultimately, though, they didn't have enough utility. And then once the push came from Canadian, a miscommunication from the team captain means that BC going to lay him out for Penta. No need to hold that retake in the post plan. And Evil Geniuses seems to have struggled under pressure so far this entire series. They have come inches away from being eliminated or failing to advance on a number of maps and a number of matchups. It's taken some hard work for them to be able to pull through. They have done so every single time. We'll see on map five if they'll be able to. Coastline going to be our final map for the best of five as it is now two to two. And Coastline is a map that is very versatile, so either team could take it pretty easily if you really think about it. Every bomb site defensible, every bomb site attackable. Everybody's got to be feeling comfortable. Our experts are ready to once again go through the two maps that we just saw. Penta taking two in a row now, blunting Evil Genius's momentum. And the world defending world champions against the multiple season champions will now be taken to a fifth matchup. We'll toss to the experts. Kicks and Interabang working so hard, and we'll have one more map from them, and we'll have one more map from Penta and EG. We want that, don't we? We love an idea of a world championship going to five maps, particularly one which not so long ago looked like a 3-0 sweep was in order. Fox A, Zeronic, and Wilkie, our last chance together before somebody is the new world champion of, well, maybe not new, maybe retaining world champion, but the champion for this year uh, for Siege. It could actually turn out to be Penta after all. This is the series of all series. The, yes. The biggest event of the year, biggest match of the year, and it goes to the fifth map coastline, yeah. which I'm sure a lot of people are excited to see. So, I mean, I think a big thing that if EG want to play as strong as they did in their first two maps, NVK needs to step up immensely. And NVK is definitely at a... A really rough game, both on, on Calf and now on, on Bank. The, the flanks, the roaming not really seeming to work, be working as, they, uh, <laughs> as, as he wanted it to. And I don't know, it, it seems like uh, EG didn't believe that they could lose these two maps. There's a one clear problem at the moment for EG. Like, the first map was Clubhouse. Penta can't roam in Clubhouse. It's super hard to roam in Club. Uh, they were able to deal with the roamers in, in Oregon in the top floor. They took Jonas and Goga constantly out. But now in Cafe, as in Bank, they are really struggling to deal with those roamers. And if they cannot work their ways to deal with the, with the roamers, yeah. they are going to have a, a lot of problems in Coastline. It's so easy to move around the Coastline with, as a roamer that uh, they really need to fix the roam hunt game. Cafe, though, we thought that was going to be Penta's downfall. We thought, well, this is not something we're expecting them to win, and yet they did. And we go to Bank, and another one falls their way as well. I think that's something that surprised us was the yeah. Montang play from Fabian. <laughs> now, nobody thought Montang would be picked out. You know, we've seen a lot more Blitz play, uh, and this isn't year two, season two, where Montang got an insane buff. So he's playing it very well as kind of the wall, and we can't say that EG isn't playing as well as they are, but they have to step up here. EG was definitely struggling, late, struggling with Montaigne. Uh, both, we didn't really see enough Lesion to, to counter him, to, to get him to pull his shield down. The Echo wasn't playing that aggressive, and they, they wasted so many gadgets, so much utility to try and deal with him. One of the top four rounds, NDK tries to flank Monty out on the balcony, but I mean, it's, it's never gonna work. There's always gonna be people covering up on that, so. EG has to, uh, they have to get back in the game right now. Yeah, I think the last round in Bank was a good example of how to deal with the roamers if you don't want to go fight them. Penta pushed the servers in, in Bank so fast. They were in, in 30 seconds, they had all the time in the world to burn out all the smoke canisters, all the nitros, all the echo pulses to get down that diffuser and win the round. So uh, if you don't want to fight the roamers, just go to the side and leave the roamers to be. Just hold the angle where they're going to come and try to flank you, like Shate did, got two picks. Easy beasy. Coastline is going to turn this almost into a best of one. Mm. These are two teams that we know can shake this off. We've seen Penta shake off being 2-0 down. We've just seen EG lose two rounds in a row. They've had that chance for a little bit break. They'll come back, they'll be fresh, and we're ready to go on this. So, Coastline, as a decider for a world championship, that's a, that's a little bit unusual, isn't it? Interesting. 
EG is going to have to rally everything they have, especially Penta now having the first two maps. They're going to have the momentum, and Penta is a team that plays with momentum. Yeah. And like you said, uh, like the caster says, the crowd went a little quiet when yep. Penta was coming back. So the crowd's going to need to step it up for EG if they want to come out on top. There's some people here in the audience for Penta as well. They stepped it up a bit. There was some support for them. We will go to Coastline very soon, and when we do, Penta are on defense. One of the... One of the interesting things about the Coastline game is that none of the teams have enough info on each other on that map. Yeah. So this can be anyone's. Whether EG comes up with a better strat or Pens is winning on fragging potential, it's, it's impossible to call. It's all up in the air, and Coastline's one of those maps that hasn't been explored, so honestly, yeah. anything can come out, especially with Shaz saying that their team has a lot more to offer and a lot of hidden tricks, so I think that's why they feel so confident picking out the Coastline. And it might stump EG if they're not ready for it, but I'm sure they have some things of their own to uh, bring out. The coastline is actually one of the maps where all of the bomb sites are played, even in Pro League, so it's interesting, interesting to see what sites that the teams are preferring to defend. I think the penthouse is the obvious choice to go, but after that, are they going to play Huga? Are they going to play the blue bar, pink bar, or the kitchen? It's like yeah. the second site is always like a kind of interesting to see what the teams prefer to play. And these are teams that we have seen be creative. We talked about how maybe Penta got off to a bad start in this best of five by not being the creative team that we'd seen. You were saying there were no surprises. We weren't, we weren't getting the stuff that we know Penta can just create on the fly. And we know EG, they can do it too. It might be just they, you know, they count a strat for the next round um, as opposed to perhaps you know, turn around in the middle of a, uh, a round. There's not many rounds left now. You want to be a world champion here. And I don't think EG are the sort of team who are feeling any pressure about it's their trophy to retain. And Penta, though, they, they want to get that big W they've never had. If their big surprise was just to pull Monty out, uh, yeah. I'd be a bit surprised. So I, I hope they have something in store for Consulate, but then, or sorry, Coastline. Coastline. But then again, leaving your big You're trick. You're still for doubting the, that they've got it, aren't leaving you? Leaving your big trick for the last map, you, you don't want to gamble that it's going to be fifth map, right? Yeah. You want to win it early. Coastline. Yeah, definitely. Coastline's a map where it's not super defender sided, not attacker sided, and there's so many crossfires, so many angles that you can have. So Montang, just that being your big strat is not going to come into play, especially with the crossfires that they can play. It's so hard to isolate 1v1s on a shield map, especially with the roof from attackers. You have to utilize that to cut off rotation or else the defenders are going to run all over you. Here yep. we go. Sixth Invitational 2018, it's been a long time coming. We are thrilled to have had six days with you here in Montreal to bring you this amazing tournament. It comes down to the last map of the last match. That's how it should be. It's going to be Coastline, and it's going to be EG or Penta Sports, who will be the world champion in just a few rounds' time. Keep the support going, ladies and gentlemen, on stream and with us here in Montreal. These teams deserve it. And they're going to bring you the very best they've got. Let's settle who is the best in the world with Kickstarter and Terrabang Coastline for Penta Sports that get evil geniuses. Map number five between two extraordinary teams. And as I said before, could we have it any other way? It doesn't really matter whether you're a fan of Evil Geniuses or of Penta Sports. You have had a great matchup so far. Coastline is a map that both teams should be comfortable enough on. It is a good site for a tiebreaker. After Evil Geniuses started off by winning the first two maps, 2-0, looking absolutely incredible. Penta was able to take all of that away from them and respond in kind. I think Coastline is definitely the best possible map we could have to lock out this series, as it will likely be pretty back and forth, as you talked about earlier. Now, the very typical bomb site going to be the very first defense here from Penta as they go on to Penthouse and Projector, or Home Theater, some call it. This is, I think, in ranked especially, the number one bomb site at high levels. It's questionable. There are a lot of options you have, but all reliable isn't a bad one. Coastline's a map where all four sites see play at the top level. Yes, I would agree that right now it seems the Master Bedroom does appear to be the preferred bomb site, but some teams will go for mm -hmm. one of the bars downstairs, either Blue Bar or, or Sunrise Bar, or they could potentially go over to Hookah and Billiards. So Hookah and Billiards, at one point, the second most preferred site has seen Attackers its influence wane. We've even Attackers seen Kitchen downstairs emerge a number of times, too. EG spawning primarily, in fact, entirely on the front door spawn. They're going to be setting up. 
likely to take into B. VIP going to be the main objective here for Evil Geniuses. A great beachhead to start things off. There isn't a Thermite, though, on EG's side. They only have the Habana, which means any holes they can open up in that wall will be very small indeed. There's also a Bandit, which means we will need to see one of the attackers either repel on the B window to shoot those batteries or grenade them from below. So much of EG's success over the last two days relied upon two people on the team, both Young and NBK, neither of whom have had the strongest day today. BC and Necrox woke up yesterday and have played very commendable. For NBK, you will need to regain that confidence. Very important part when you are doing the entry that he is doing, because the team's fortunes will likely rise alongside his individual contributions. See BC from below will start things off with a bang. Takes out Pengu very early on. That was the Mira who was playing. It just doesn't bother to see it. Will also manage to get the Mira window finally, while Canadian from above does some damage himself. That's A gonna be a dock, so he's gonna be able to heal himself back up. We see Eunice inside of the bathroom, but obviously, since he's been droned out, he will not go down. Chate playing aggressively over by these main lobby stairs. He's looking for a drop. Could catch one of the attackers off guard. Eunice will get young, though. And it's been a response from Penta. They're not letting it slip too far in the favor of Evil Geniuses. When attacking this site, one of the most important parts for Evil Geniuses is to put young on the big window inside of bedroom. The dock is Chate down. Up, then back down. NVK gets a kill for his team. And that is a good start, at least certainly much better than the previous two maps. You can see that Penta is very far off the site, not relying too heavily on an anchor. Instead, going for that retake strategy, which has worked for them a little bit in the past. Eunice going to be rotating back in. Canadian will take him down. Goga from the main hallway loses that fight. BC absolutely on fire. And the last defender is Fabian in the main lobby. He's looking to deny the attackers pushing in from main hallway into projector, but it's too little too late as Necrox is planting the diffuser inside of the other bomb site. 30 seconds now. Fabian gonna be having to retake up these stairs. A very difficult push. And he will be caught out in the middle of it. BC wins the round for his team of 3K. This is the start that evil geniuses need after they've lost steam over maps three and four. Some confidence, a bit of momentum, and most importantly, you, crowd, to cheer as loud as you can for the hometown team. Penthouse Theater is going to be where Evil Geniuses go themselves. Amazing that they were still able to win that. Now, last season, Evil Geniuses played Coastline, most notably against a team then known as Most Wanted. It was the only round that, or the only map, rather, that Evil Geniuses lost all season long. It came on Coastline. The most crucial parts of their push was to establish control over the hatch inside a bathroom, cut off the A site by bucking from below, which is where BC was, which is where he was able to get so many kills with that frag grenade while having Young on the big window inside of Master Bedroom. One of those points was eliminated very early by Penta, but EG was able to still make it happen. That is what they need more of because you can't just lose one part of your strategy and then crumple, or else your opponents will be able to take advantage of it. There are three primary ways to disable projector room, or meter room, or whatever you want to call it, on this hold as an attacking team. You can take control over the main lobby, move up those stairs, and thermite the wall in the back of projector, or you can throw some yings and smokes into projector from the B window. You can also do what Evil Geniuses did, where they came down in the main lobby and bucked open the floor underneath the anchors with two great effects. You see, they'll take that main window off. Now they'll attack the hatch. With Goga sitting on a thermite, the assumption will be that they will decide to attack from VIP or Circle Couch and towards the wall that leads into Master. That is what we see to be about as common as you can get on a strategy. And in fact, I would say favors teams that don't have as high level coordination. So you see it primarily in ranked or in casual play for the attackers. So Penta has brought a Thermite. Now, that means they're going to easily push in through VIP and open up that wall into B, which should give them a great line of sight and potential to plant the diffuser. Eunice gonna likely stay on this flank hold for the majority of the round until they actually start pushing the site itself. Stay back. But they're taking it pretty slow as Pengu clears out ADSs and potentially opens up mirror windows. And he's not gonna be successful here. Just so sitting far. inside a bathroom, 
The smoke goes out as well as a frag. That lands just near the feet of BC. It takes some damage, but will stay alive. Necrox, though, on the roam, not to be spotted as a Twitch drum tries to hunt him down. BC will suffer some more damage. They are applying a ton of pressure to him. It's Fabian who's going to rotate now to try and find the Vigil who was last week outside. Pengu takes out BC. What a shot there. Tiny angle for him to finagle and put his team now in a one-man advantage. Evil geniuses looking like they're having a bad time right now. Downstairs, the roamers not going to be overly effective. As Canadian Tempty comes from the main hallway, Shate's gonna take out the other anchor, that's Young. Canadian from behind, hasn't been spotted out. The glass is peeking, wins the fight, Eunice on fire. Necrox the last defender alive as Shate takes NVK out of this picture. He's gonna have to retake onto a post plant with five alive on Penta. It would be one of the greatest clutches in Rainbow Six history if he were to manage to win this. He does have the Boss G, which is an interesting weapon, could swing in his favor if he's on, if he's hitting shots right now. It's one, a single bullet to take Chate down. Here's the other on the mirror window. That was Fabian, he lost his opportunity. A second for Necrox as he drops into the main lobby. Looking for this fight, sees the Claymore, can't move all the way in. It gets a third though, Gogo goes down. And can he get two more? No sir, Pengu inside a projector locks that out. But you gotta feel Penta uncomfortable in that round. Is that the first boss G kill that we've seen in Pro League? I want to say it is, but I know it's not. It's a kind of a silly weapon, really. It's very efficient, very good. If you don't miss shots, which is, even for <laughs> these players, a lot to be asking of a person. It's listed as a shotgun, but happens to be the best DMR in the game. Yeah, it's actually a sniper rifle. They just hit it in the skin of a shotgun to make it have more sense in CQB. Now, both attacking rounds, or both rounds successful for the attackers. So, all sites are unlocked. Penta will go back to Master Bedroom. That will give EG another opportunity to attack, similar to as before. They'll be running a similar composition. In fact, the exact same. They'll need to work, Penta rather, will need to work to focus on BC, downstairs in main lobby. Activating Some camera work going up, and Fabian manages to grab it. It's likely that you're going to see Young try to go towards that big window. Fabian having some difficulty He's trying, to, trying. trying to hide that camera fully on the darkened strip trim of the actual wall itself to make the camera less visible when the attackers push it. There's no IQ nor Thatcher, so that camera will have to be taken down and spotted manually. Taken out by an EMP nor by an IQ. Attackers simply spotting it on the gadget. You see Penta setting up to hold VIP. They didn't put a lot of presence in this room last time they went on this hold, and it didn't actually really matter too much. Evil Geniuses didn't, well, they prioritized main lobby and pushing into Projector. They didn't really think too much about actually going into VIP and the other bomb site of Master Bedroom. Seems to be they've shifted their priorities, though. As you can see, Young going over to that balcony. They'll look to repel up on the north side. Outside the front door, NVK laying down some fire. Going to receive some, though. Will not deliver any in return. I believe that's called the Lamborghini Doorway. The Lamborghini Doorway not aiding NVK. A peek from the sledge of Canadian will see no result other than one HP on Chate as he outmaneuvers and outperforms his opponent. From that kitchen, oh, what a shot from Young. Again, on the kitchen window. Chate goes down, a little bit overkill from that DMR, which delivers about 70 damage per shot. Evil Geniuses took a lot of damage through all of those fights as well. You can see NBK and Young will lick their wounds as the round progresses onwards. Still Fabian though, just off site. He's downstairs inside of Sunrise Bar and they will try to drone him out. Still good drone economy for EG. They've still got enough available. You can see three drones in action right now. Though all in very close proximity to one another. Young will go on a drone. So that looks like still four drones remaining. BC waiting for a mark. Oh, what a oh. shot! How he can capitalize, BC! Manages to let Goga get away with just a tiny amount of health remaining. That could have been the Ella dispatched just over halfway through the round. Fabian, though, undeterred inside of Sunrise Barn. Haven't been able to get in at all. Goga finally downed, and that means that an advantage in favor, though Goga gets picked up. Evil Genius is still applying a lot of pressure to that bottom floor. Young looking to move into VIP and, and deny some rotations. BC narrowly missing a kill there as Penta aware of these angles. He will get hit by a Gersmot. It's a good job from Goga to throw that through the hole. 
and delay this round further. Coming down to the last little bit here as Evil Geniuses looks to push upstairs. And became positioned by a banded wall just next to that projector. They will not have any opportunity to be able to get in there. MBK will at least alert the defenders to his presence. Fabian's made his way back up to Aquarium. Those were some shots through the wall in the luggage. It's BC there waiting to greet him, but the Valkyrie will be able to peel off. Sitting just by the pool table, Goga, who was brought back to life, fixes neck rocks, bonded down, leaving three for EG. Yunus, despite being disoriented, a remarkable kill onto NVK, leaving young NVC, and what a swift finish as Penta takes their very first lead of our final map. And two in a row as well. What a hold. They saw clearly the attack strategy that Evil Geniuses was employing, the fact that they prioritized that bottom floor, and they maneuvered around it. By simply putting a mirror window in that hallway, they afforded themselves so much ground covered. And uh, Evil Geniuses, for some reason, didn't try to buck that mirror window from below. EG has every site unlocked. They'll go to Kitchen downstairs. So they realize that maybe Master isn't where they ought to be. So our second site we will see today, possibly two of four. They'll go down to the kitchen. Oof. Penta being overtaken in the crowd very swiftly there. Now Evil Geniuses looking to hold, like you said, a different sight. Something that might catch Penta off guard. I like how they're doing a half-half on this wall. Half open on the top, half closed on the other side. This is going to mean that they can see four, they can use gas canisters, they can do a great many things over the top that portion of the wall, but they also won't lose the anchor position of that shelf in the northeast corner of A. Good hold from EG looking so far. Mirror window going to be going down facing towards B. And that's a very good mirror window that will establish a lot of control on delivery. If you don't have it, it can be very difficult to hold that single doorway. Doesn't look like anyone from EG is playing inside bathroom, which is kind of an oddity. Usually a position heavily utilized by the defense on this site. But seemingly they're prioritizing a little bit of an off strat. Or un yeah, well, an off strat in that it's off site. We do have two roamers over by the two bars. Jonas is relatively safe at this position. The only reliable way to take him out is exactly where you see Gogo right now. By the doorway, just sitting next to the bomb site. Claymore goes down, and that is... Pretty difficult for the defenders to shoot, if possible, even at all. That would mean that the glass could just sit there perched and not really have to potentially fear. Another opportunity is in the little foyer right next to Sunrise Bar, which, if a second Claymore goes down, will, for the most part, make the glass rest a bit easier. They could always go for a longer rotate through the actual door itself. Canadian and NVK and Necrox all could be roaming on the south side of the building. They have avoided, up until now, the drone work. Fabian will spot out that roamer at the end of the main stairs hallway. Chate looking for the angle, narrowly missing the shot. Meanwhile, Pengu going to get downed inside of Hookah. Oof. Sees the yellow. Doesn't hit the one tap. That was actually Fabian, another Penta member who gets the kill. Chate will get a nade on the Necrox as well. And now Penta in commanding lead of this round. Can they get the third? They certainly can. Chate from projector gets MVK as he attempts to rotate out. The roam clear from Penta was absolutely vicious. Spearheaded by that glasses push inside of VIP. BCC4, as you can see, only really got the circular couch inside of VIP. He'll get taken down by Pengu, who is back from the dead. Young will have to hold off against a tide. He get hit with a Twitch drone, his position given away. Twitch drone could have potentially taken out the Mira. A flawless round from Penta as Pengu eliminates Young. It's a strong start as EG went up by one, but now three rounds in a row. Penta looking unbeatable for the moment. Penta are absolutely cascading this win. Evil geniuses are going to have to show us something amazing to stop it. But it seems like the momentum is completely against them. They've got, I mean, that last round, what do we see from EG? They tried to roam super heavy on those main lobby stairs. They had three players at that position. That is a huge gamble. And as soon as Penta drone that out and determined that was the case. It was a simple collapse. I mean, back against the wall, EG just couldn't win their fights. Penta will go downstairs to the kitchen. 
as well. So only two sites that have emerged thus far. Pento could potentially push this to match point and end Coastline very quickly in the next two rounds, depending on their play here. For Evil Geniuses, they were aware that there would be no master site whatsoever. I like what they brought. It's the exact same five operators that they brought, both times attacking master from above. Might fit to their play style here. Evil Geniuses has been prioritizing clearing out that bottom floor so they can shoot people from below. And now they're going to have to do the opposite as the, we see a defense of, well, the bottom floor. Or they could just come in horizontally, but that's a huge gamble, especially on this site, which lends itself so very well to the vertical control, which is why you're seeing Chate put that mirror window upstairs in projector facing towards Penthouse. It establishes that Penta will hold that firm. The Evil Geniuses is going to have to struggle to deny Penta that control. For a second there, the young was going to see the feet of Pengu inside of bed or inside of the bathroom. You see, going smartly up to the top, there was a defender position, potentially looking for a run out just by the window inside a bathroom to get the repel of any members of Evil Geniuses. Losing one this early on would almost certainly give a ton of confidence to Penta to clear out and finish that round strong. Penta has a roamer inside of security by the main lobby. That's Fabian, who could potentially pounce on any EG attacker who pushes into the lobby itself. Young poised to do so, as he's simply cutting off rotation right now, taking it nice and slow. Doesn't need to rush himself. There are still two minutes and plenty of time for Evil Geniuses. Very slow going, as you would say. Still controlling from above, waiting to drop. This might be a bit of a bait and switch here from Penta as the roamer at the top of main lobby stairs has been droned out. Fabian hasn't. And as soon as Young pushes in, get that kill, he might see a fight from below. No, it's not going to happen. Very wise from Young. They are taking way too long to get inside of second floor right now. Shate is proving to be a very worthy adversary. A couple of his bullets rattle in, but NBK starts the round off by taking Gogeta. It's taken over 90 seconds, but Canadian now pounces on Shate, and there's three left for Penta. They have control upstairs inside of VIP, and they look like there's still one left for them to dispatch. Both Penta and Jonas downstairs, Fabian now downstairs as well, so they have complete control of that second floor. Still an X Factor in play from Penta. That's Fabian, which you pointed out could come from behind and win this round for his team, but it's gonna be a very daunting task as EG has such a decisive man advantage. Panku now holding inside a bathroom, just waiting it out. Still plenty of time here. It's gonna force the defense to be a little bit more scared, I'm sure. As Young opens up this delivery doorway, looking for the fight. Just final 30 seconds. Another who goes down. Young takes out Jonas and on stairs. Fabian, though, just off site, takes out Canadian as he's able to get back in. A smoke goes down, and you can see Young falls too. All of EG is very low. So if Pengu and Fabian can hold on, this will go the way of the Europeans. 15 seconds left. You hear the timer itself. Pengu still under pressure, will be shot at from two angles in just a moment. Pengu, what a shot on the NBK! He gets two! Now an advantage for EG goes away. Necrox just needs to find Fabian, who will hold on. Necrox, no diffuser, pen to match point! What a round from them! That's four in a row for Penta, and they are poised, but moments away, in fact from being the new world champions. Evil Geniuses has consistently been in a position where they have looked like they are going to fall behind and made us wait. If ever there was a moment to cheer for your team, this is it. EG just looking to hold on as they go into the defense of the master. This is the penguin that we have seen. Eight yeah. kills so far. What a fantastic job from Pengu. Trying to rally his team, bring them back behind his banner. They'll go upstairs to Master, where EG has not won on defense at all. They will have to buck that trend, or we will have brand new world champions. Send the crowd home here in Montreal, unhappy. Facing match point. 10 seconds to go. Final setup going down, lots of barbed wire, Trying to protect that wall inside of Master Bedroom. 
from VIP is Canadian Will Banditrick. Attackers recovered the Last time around, if I remember correctly, there were no defenders with any utility being able to take care of that wall. They will not make that mistake again. Pengu looks like he was just trying away. a couple shots and looked like he was, yes, indeed, inches away. Propelling onto the main B window, though. Just gonna open that up. If nothing else, make evil geniuses think about the angles they can and cannot play. Chate droning into VIP. It's shaping up to be a very typical VIP to be take, as they do have a thermite. Well, this last time, it was a bit of a struggle here for Penta. But overall, they've been very successful. Not a lot of pressure inside of VIP. As the glass goes in, and now can essentially cut off a push inside of that room from any of the Romers or players off of sight. He'll wait for the rest of his team in order to get up. Jonas has looked like a very good shot so far this game. Along with Pengu, it's been him getting those impact frags when needed. A grenade gets hurled down inside of bombsite A, takes a portion of Young's health, more than half of it. That's the smoke. We'll have to retreat, or else fear getting picked away. Slow fade shot there from Chate. He's not trying to risk too much. He's used both of his grenades and has done a good portion of damage, but now Penta needs to clear the batteries off of the wall so they can thermite their way in. That's gonna fall on to, looks like Fabian, to either use his Twitch drone or just go downstairs and shoot open the batteries from below. Finally, they are gone, and from behind, NBK takes down Eunice. A great impact there to establish a flank. Doga will respond though, and VK bites the dust. Now a four on four. Chate still inside of that VIP. The wall has, I believe, been opened. And Fabian trying to clear out this final roamer in the pool table. That's Necrox just waiting for his opportunity. The Fuser is down on the roof? Did I see that correctly? The Fuser is down on the roof, which means Penta with only 50 seconds left is gonna have to put Pengu, if no one else, to go and pick that up. Could be Goga as well. Chate's gonna get a kill onto Canadian. Final 45 though, Necrox trades off Fabian, still 3v3. Goga will go up to fetch that diffuser. It takes only about 10 to 15 seconds, as he's now gonna go back down. Chate hitting that shock wire on the wall inside of VIP. They're waiting for Necrox to potentially come back to site, sitting just above the cool vibe stairs. Goga repelling in onto the balcony, just outside of Hall of Fame. The flash rattles off in the background and they're going to have to hurry. They are only seconds away from potentially being crowned winners, but a big C4 from Gogo will blow this wide open. Shate goes up on top of the bed, breathes in some toxic gas, and will now go for a plant himself. How effectively is Pengu going to be able to cover that fire? He gets BC, can Pengu keep going? He's looked so good, Pengu, but Necrox takes him down, what a clutch! And ET stays alive! They'll get the diffuser! Penta not taking this just yet. Necrox specifically with a deep roam in pool table, not popping until the perfect opportunity. Very well done for him there to come from behind, absolutely decimate that attack. Penta played it about as well as they possibly could have. EG just played it better. Just in case you didn't want a game that was as exciting as this, EG staving off elimination for at least one round. That's their first successful defense. They do so upstairs on Master. They'll now have to go to another site. Earlier on, we'd seen them go down to Kitchen after their first failure of a defense. Could we see a change there? Could they choose Hookah and Billiards? Could we see them go down to Sunrise or Blue Bar? Right now, carrying his team is Necrox. He has had an incredible day so far. And he has been the story, and Spotlight has shown on him very brightly for Evil Geniuses. On the other side, a good team effort. But Pengu seems to have come back down to where we, ex or came, rose up to what we expected. He's not come back down to Earth just yet. <laughs> Mixed my metaphors, that's okay. It happens. Penta defending that master projector. Again, the very common bomb site. Evil Geniuses don't have a thermite once more, which means they cannot come from Attack VIP. This is, user. again, the Attack final time they've done this. I mean, they've done it, 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 it so many times. They always attack from the main lobby. They always come to clear from below, and they try to defang projector before making that site push. It's a good strategy, but it's also kind of a risk, as now Penta are so used to this. They've not been able to take Fabian out early on. They need to be more proficient in their entry. 
This speaks specifically to Canadian and NVK, if they're going to do the necessary drone work to try to find those who play off of sight. The Valkyrie of Fabian, or Fabian rather, cannot spend a minute and a half downstairs in order to put that pressure on BC. You wondered before why BC wasn't able to do his job effectively. It's because of the constant looming threat of somebody playing off sight. To tie up that loose end and look at the drone work from BC. He sees two, one in courtyard, one sitting just inside of main entrance. Meant to have full control here. BC looking for the one tap. He gets it. Eunice goes down, and BC absolutely on fire right now. He's similar to Necrox for EG, has been stepping up for his team, and we're filling the shoes of NVK and Canadian, who did get a 4K earlier today, so. BC's drone just goes right on by, and Shate doesn't shoot it. They have no idea he's in there, but a couple shots go in. You can hear Young's DMR in the background laying down some fire as Shate finally gets that drone. It's Canadian now as Shate will once again get droned out, this time from Necrox. So two drones that have been dispatched to find this Jaeger. Flashes go in, not expecting Shate to have moved. NVK will need to win this fight or his team will find themselves, and he does! A good shot through security as Shate falls off the board. Three members of Penta left. Mira from below as that's BC establishing his dominance down in the main lobby, exactly where we know him to be and be so comfortable. Taking out Pengu in a previous round, but the Mira is going to be a bit more careful of all of those openings at his feet. NBK back on the drone, we'll try to figure out where the last three defenders are. Necrox on the belt, waiting inside of sight. They have a numbers advantage, and they're not too poorly on time. And Fabian still has not been found out. Instead of being on the first floor, he's up in billiards. He could potentially get a wonderful flank off. Koga goes for a free fire. Young loses shield. Canadian, a volley. Almost a flawless round. It's all Fabian. He's inside of theater, but he's going to have a lot of bodies to fight through. He sees BC, a flawless round. EG, two in a row. They'll go back to defense. Could we have overtime? Certainly imagine we could, as now Evil Geniuses is just going to have to hold and wait to win this. You can see on their faces, they are very patient, very ready to win this and put it into OT. Going on to Kitchen and Sir's entrance defense now for Evil Geniuses. Take a look at what we see. You'll see it in just a moment as it's not currently on your screen but Penta will run a Monte. And that has been a defense that has not worked, or that has been a strategy that has not been able to be countered from EG. Now the kitchen defense has been unsuccessful, I believe, for both teams so far in this match. Oh, set for, no, actually, I stand corrected. Penta did manage to win one there earlier, but Evil Geniuses haven't. So they're gonna have to do something that hasn't happened thus far. Again, using that very deep roam over on the west side of the building, the double bar Mira setup. And they're going to have the same exact thing on that south wall into A. Good amount of control there for Evil Geniuses. Not a lot of priority being placed on the B-bomb site. The last time we saw EG go here, they did not really defend the bathroom very much at all. This is a perfect site to roll a Montane out on as well, as they can just simply go in through an open doorway. They don't have to really worry about a window. Canadian, a spot peak, really? The glass goes down. That'll open things up. And EG taking gambles that pay off. You got to think that'll hurt their push. Only one set of smokes now, and no one can look through them anymore after Eunice goes down. That spawn peak right there is about as common as it gets. Canadian clearly relying on that fact, and Eunice just not checking his corners. Very negligent. That's not it. expecting a, a spawn peak I mean, in this point in time. That specific angle, that, that specific spawn peak is so common, you just don't think you'd see it at this level. This is as high as it gets when it comes to Rainbow Six Siege competition. And yet, basic, simple spawn peak. Gonna give the man advantage to EG early on. Hookah control in favor of Penta, though, as they move their way towards Billiards as well. Look like they were going to be employing that Montane for a... to be able to clear out the Roamers instead. They're just going to hit Sunrise Bar. 
It's going to make them have to expend some of those smoke canisters or even the C4s themselves to stop the push. No, Penta has not really been baited. In fact, both Pengu and Fabian have been very proficient at dropping the shield and getting kills when need be on Montaigne as an operator. So, clearing into the double bar, they have established there are no roamers here anymore. That's a mirror window that will not aid the defense at all. They still have one, though, in the site. I believe it's facing the wrong way. So, if Penta maneuvers this correctly, it could, be aid, it could aid them greatly. No, in fact, it's facing towards the main lobby. So, EG prioritizing that southeast control, which is the opposite of what Penta's going for. First smoke will go down to stop Pengu's assault. He'll go to drone as Shate just waited. Fabian, though, very far and all off on his own. You've got the Montaigne holding the diffuser. That would suggest to me that unless they juggle, it'll be him going in backwards with the shield up on his back and shoulders trying to get the plant. Fabian holding down any rotation through Courtyard, but BC takes out Goga, and EG finds himself quite comfortable. Fabian dives in, but they stop him. What a trade! There's only one left! Shate, can we see overtime? He starts his comeback with one kill. He does not hold the diffuser. There's only 30 seconds. Sixth of the round, not a lot of time. You see a mark, that will be a drone. Still up for Penta, trying to gather that information. 10 seconds has fallen off of the clock. He moves towards the main door. There is barbed wire in there. That will let EG know. But you can see, there's only one inside. It's the Mira of BC. Can he return fire across fire in overtime? Why not? Evil geniuses against all odds, down four to one, have brought it back with three rounds in a row to overtime on the final map of this best of five. You can see from their faces again, they are calm and focused. We'll go through prep phase underway as Penta starts on defense. Both teams showing that they can show up on either side, attack or defense. The crowd quiets very quickly as we start. Could be two rounds away from crowning our champion. They'll opt to go upstairs inside of Master, a site that Penta has looked quite comfortable on. We'll see if they can make it work for them another time. We have no Mira on Penta's side of things, which means that Projector will not be very useful. Though that makes a lot of sense because the way EG has been playing to counter those Miras is very efficient. They've had a good go of it so far. Which means EG, if they fall into the same trap as executing the strategy they've done so many times on this site, they will likely see a counter, a direct left hook from Penta Sports. That's the risk they have to take, though, as they still do not have a Thermite attacking on to Penthouse and Projector. Pretty incredible to think that in what is match points sending us to overtime, you gamble on a spawn peak onto a glass <laughs> and you win. Uh, Canadian wins this. That he does. They'll attack the delivery doorway first and foremost. They'll open it up. Canadian positioned on the other side of the map from NVK and a lot of drone work. You can see most of Evil Geniuses right now on their drone gathering intel. The, all, the whole team, rather, has looked better over the last couple rounds and it's been paying off. NVK inside of Sunrise Bar will grab the footprints and just look Ooh. to see. Expected that one. He knew exactly where it was. Just looked right up and took it down. Fabian playing as that Valkyrie with his cams has been invaluable to his team so far this match. He's been able to consistently help his team by placing the attackers in their locations through those cams. Not to mention that he's been very elusive. He's rotated and only been killed very late in the round almost every time on defense. Seeing Canadian back on Ash does, I think, instill a lot of confidence in his team. He is a fantastic Ash player. Let's see if he's able to make something work for him this round. The Jackal still pinging off at the player in billiards, and they're going to spot Ella inside a VIP. From below, BC still doing an amazing amount of work in this position, despite the fact that Penta has got to be aware of this play right now. They have dealt with it now three or four times. NVK coming up those main lobby stairs. We'll see the shoulder of the bandit. That's the back, in fact, and he will lay down some fire. Only putting Eunice on half HP, though, not quite a kill. Also expecting a push from Luggage Hallway. Very careful for NVK here. Goga, a lot of potential for a run out right now. 
We do have Necrox holding the angle as they still know that Goga is in this spot. Goes for a quick peek. They just wait. You can see an ADS just by that window to catch any projectile. If Necrox vaults in, be certainly to his doom. Canadian, though, comes out of nowhere. That's the captain. They work together. Great communication. Goga dislodged, but Pengu has the vigil just nearby. Will eliminate BC. NBK and Canadian a rally. Two away, but Pengu comes in. He takes Necrox down before retreating himself. There's the Blackbeard on the window. And now Fabian on the flank. Two each. Canadian has a tiny portion of health. He holds that diffuser. Pengu down. Fabian all alone in theater. He sticks the diffuser. Waits for the audio kit. Young will need to cover. There is a C4 from Fabian. He primes it. Canadian falls off. He goes down. Young will need to get in. He has only 10 seconds, and he enters. They will be in a standoff. Can he get the Valkyrie? Two seconds. Young pushes up, running out of time. Neither get it. Penta, hold on. Oh, my. Match point. Penta. That round was well in hand of evil geniuses there. But they let it go. Poor coverage of his teammates, Young, from the balcony there. Let that first kill go, the initial attempted plant. Couldn't possibly get the C4 midair. That's too much to put on one person. And Evil Geniuses throughout the series has struggled very much with those retakes. Penta focusing on that as their main strategy. As it's working for them time and time again, no matter what the map. Immediately, EG will go down to Kitchen. They will opt for that instead of Master. Maybe trying to shake up Penta's operator choices, knowing that this is a site that they have fared well on. Master has been the shakier of Jack two so far for Evil Geniuses. They're going to be running a Rook. Are we going to see Canadian go for that spawn peak again? We'll find out soon enough. I seriously doubt it. But it would be quite interesting, that's for sure. They had the game on the line, and they gambled last time. It paid off, but that's something that they will be looking for. Penta alerted to this position. They're going to just hide their drones and simply wait. No reason to expend them this early on. You know where you're going to push. Find the operators out and use it later when they're far more valuable mid -run. Kitchen defense is going to be a difficult one for evil geniuses. They made it work last time, but very narrowly. Indeed, indeed, a spawn beat coming up over by Ruins. <laughs> Nobody over by Canadian. He really wants this win, so much so that he's going to take every risk he possibly can. Nearly avoiding death there. Chate on the windows, not going to hit his shots. The hope of North America keeping the world title in Montreal. Little geniuses. They were known as Continuum when they won last time around. A name change and some roster changes. Very few. Control over Aqua here in favor of Penta. Now this is where Necrox clutched out the last time the defense was in Penthouse. So Penta trying to deny that position as much as possible. Stacking up two defenders inside of Sunrise Bar. If there was a push through bathroom or even through one of the walls in kitchen, they would have to find themselves funneling in through one doorway. It could be a daunting prospect for them and end up resulting in an easy hold for Penta. If Penta moves down those blue the stairs, they will also well. establish a denial of the rotation for these two roamers. They'll only be able to use that rotation hole into the other bar, but it's very dangerous as it's not directed at the site. It's going to expend a lot of time for Penta. A lot of caution as we eclipse the 90 second into the round. One drone for Shate will help him as he tries to clear out. He's now got blue stairs, as you said. They have completely cut off control. Jonas does some fire from above. Slow going here for Penta. One round, a single minute possibly, away from winning this out. Evil Genius is again prioritizing that main lobby. It's not working out for them so far. Canadian goes down. Nice angle there from Goga, expecting that hold. And the IGL and Captain off of the board. Advantage Penta with one minute to go. They've got control from above. They'll now drop. Still inside of Sunrise, you saw that there were two members of defense. Now they've got two playing over by security. Sunrise has been completely forfeited. You've lost Blue Bar as well. They have very smartly circled back. Fabian is on flank watch from above. You can expend one down, but wow, NBK eliminates Jonas. And that smoke, you cannot see through it. Amidst the smoke, you can see the plant going down. Fabian gets Necrox, who goes on the flank. Shate uncontested. Diffuser goes down. 
Now EG will need to retake the site. But Young trading off Goga, Fabian takes NBK down, BC, it's 2-2. Two -two. It's Pengu and Fabian left. Two of the best known players on that team. Their captain sufficient, Fragger, Fabian down, it's Pengu. Defending the Ash just the waiting, or rather the Hibana just waiting. They'll look to push together. The Diffuser in a position where they'll have to see when the Hibana goes through. One will cover the doorway as they start to defuse. Pengu goes for one on the Young, can he go the second? They're off the known as the best team in the world, never having that distinction until today. Penta are your world champions. The second invitation. Fantastic take there from Penta. And they have to feel elated. The most wins now of any team, including a whole world championship. And Evil Geniuses just let it slip by an inch. The amount of defeat to claw back four to one, tie it up into overtime. Heartbreak. 